Dave, thank you very much. We welcome you to the Valero Alamo Bowl. It is the second drive of the bowl game as the Texas Longhorns are in this game for the second straight year. Colorado, the upstart team out of the Pac-12, trying to win its first bowl game since 2004 when Joel Klatt was the quarterback. Mike Golick Sr., Chris Budden, Jason Benetti. Texas' is opening drive with a Bijan Robinson run, then a long completion, and now Robinson, the freshman, seeking the goal line. And Robinson is in! Touchdown! Excellent job. We'll see if he got in. Excellent job on the edge. Does he get in? Hand down. Oh, it looks like he got in. Only his hand was on the ground. That's going to be a touchdown. Excellent blocking on the edge by Cade Brewer. We've got a rules analyst, Bill Lamagne, with us. Bill, what are you seeing? Well, you hit it right on the head. He stretches out. He doesn't have anything touch the ground till that ball breaks the plane of the goal line. Six points for Texas. Hand doesn't matter. That can go down. Yes, hand and foot. Otherwise, we're good. So Bijan Robinson, the explosive freshman, on a Tucson, scores a touchdown for Texas. This young man is an absolute star waiting to happen. He has a wide smile. He loves the game of football, but you said it. He's happy to dip his shoulder into people and smile while he's doing it. it, it really incredible, you know, the, and the first drive by Texas was just fantastic, and it starts out with a 27-yard run by Bijan Robinson off the left edge, a guy that loves it up, take it up the middle. They actually kept contained well there, but didn't have enough flow coming back. So he goes for 27 yards, and then you get the quick pass outside to Joshua Moore. He's given a lot of cushion out there to get him into the red zone and into scoring position. So you have the incomplete pass, and then this time you do get the edge takes to Kate Brewer, the tight end number 80 blocking on the outside. You can't give a guy 220 the corner. You can't, you can't give that guy the corner and let him turn with a head of steam up the field at that weight and that speed. Sam Ellinger, starting quarterback for Texas in his 43rd start for the Texas Longhorns. He's on a headset. He talks to Tom Herman after every possession. They have a very tight relationship, and he's got him in the end zone on their opening drive in just a couple of plays. And it'll be the Buffaloes from the 25-yard line. If you joined us before the Cheez-It Bowl on ESPN News, you heard a little of Sam Neuer. He's from just west of Portland. He's got Mean Mug there, by the way. Sam Neuer, a little mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, yeah. little kid. Yeah, you okay? Yeah, yeah we take it. <laughs> 20 games at quarterback, defensive back, transfer portal last December. Now he's second team all Pac-12. What a story. It's a great story, but now into this game, this is what happened. Colorado just got punched in the mouth. Uh -huh. That's what happened. They got the ball. They go three and out. Texas gets it, runs it on them, throws it on them, and they score in a handful of plays. And now here's Colorado. It's like, okay, did we wake up? We just got our eyes watered. We got our nose blooded a little bit. Now, how do we answer that? As you said that, Neuer was just clapping to his sideline to try and pump up his guys as Broussard gets game ta a gang tackled and we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Lexus. And what you saw right there is what you need to see out of the Texas defense. Broussard who is a smaller fast running back you can't give him the, the edge. So these are the two edge guys on the Texas defense. Again we've had some opt outs. They've had some better guys on the edge. You got some young players in there so you need to be able to not let Broussard to get outside. Great example on that play right there. Got an injured Texas Longhorn, and they cannot afford that on the defensive side of the football. Texas up 7-0 early after an opening drive touchdown. And, and Mike, Tom Herman's headline basically yesterday as he was talking to us was about the psychological impact and the physical impact of this season on the players. Yeah, w without a doubt. And what this bowl game could mean, what a way to end. You know, yeah. for Colorado, a team... Uh, pick to finish fifth in their division to do what they did. This is a reward to them for Texas And as we'll continue to talk about a lot of opt-outs to the NFL So a lot of young players playing getting to show their wares going into next year Neuer misfires it is incomplete and third down and to Tom Herman's point He was basically saying I don't think the players are getting enough credit for what they've gone through to make this season happen and how important it's been to them We talked to what six players this week. Yeah. They were all amped to be in this game even with how tough it's been and for all the games that i've done this year and talking to the coaches they brought up really the psychological and mental part more than the physical part of what this season has done for to players 
That's a middle screen, and it's incomplete. That was gummed up the whole way. Brendan Rice, the intended target for Colorado, who's playing without Levante Chenault. He's suspended for a violation of athletic department rules. A big receiver for this Buffalo team. Yeah, got to take advantage of plays. Neuer had it on the second down. He threw behind the receiver. That's one you got to have. And that's what they're going to have to do because Texas basically is going to play the run on Broussard. So Neuer is going to have to back them up with some short passes and some completions. As you see Jamison there, by the way, we should be clear, this is pretty much a road game for Colorado. Yes. There are a lot of Longhorn fans in burned orange today. As Jamison catches the line drive, and this could be trouble for the Buffaloes. Jamison wanted to get outside and couldn't do it. So Sam Ellinger getting the start once again. Could be his final game. We turn to his family for the introduction. Good evening. I'm Sam's mom, Jenna Ellinger. We have been blessed to watch Sam play football for the last four years at his dream school, the University of Texas. Sam has had an incredible career thanks to amazing coaches and teammates, including his little brother, Jake. Tonight, Sam looks to win his third bowl game as starting quarterback. Longhorn Nation, join me in wishing our horns the very best. God bless and hook em horns. Good to hear from Jenna Ellinger as Sam and his family have been through so much with the loss of his father in 2013 as Texas will run it, and they'll go with Roshan Johnson at second down coming up. This young man is an impressive kid. I just think it's incredible that growing up as a kid, this was his dream place to go, and he got to he got to live that dream. Think about that. Not only live the dream, but do as well as he has. Basically just looking up to Colt McCoy as far as the record books and being a four-year starter at the place he's always wanted to go. It's really a special, special family moment. The movement at the line and there was a flinch from the right tackle right. which if he was drawn well as soon as the defender jumped into the neutral zone the, te the linemen are told make your move yeah that, I mean that's you just have to make sure the offensive lineman has to make sure he makes the move before the defender gets back out of the neutral zone so as soon as that defender gets in the neutral zone the old line just make that move toward him and then it's going to be on the defense you feel that's inequitable? Do you feel that's unfair? Everything's unfair to the defense. Yeah, I knew you were going Offense say. a bunch of cheaters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've uncovered the truth very early in this game, by the way. Is This is a Johnson run. It'll be third down. And Chris Button, more on Sam Ellinger. Chris? Yeah, the Alamo Bowl been a special place to Sam Ellinger. Growing up a lifelong UT fan, he came here in 2012 with his family to cheer them on. Four months later, his father passed away from a heart attack. A year later, or 19, 2019, they come here and they celebrate a win. We don't know if this will be the final place that he puts on a Texas jersey. Whether he plays one more year or not, he will go down as one of the best to ever wear the burn orange Jason. We were talking to him about that, and you asked him if he'd reflected on that, and he kind of laughed and said, I haven't yet, but it seemed like he might right around this time as Ellinger loads up and Sam Ellinger goes to the outside. Well, I mean, th th this is going to be very interesting for a lot of players because, again, this year basically doesn't count. Yeah. Everybody can come back, and Sam's going to be a very interesting case on what he wants to do. Johnson, the tailback, what do you think about his skill set right now? Well, I mean, right now, according to our Todd McShay, he's the 12th ranked quarterback which you're not going high in the draft on that, on that case there. So you have to do pros and cons coming back. What quarterbacks are coming out next year? You know, do you take the, the risk of getting hurt if you come back next year? Or do you just try and get on an NFL team this year? Here's something he excels at as well. Running the football is going to be very close to the line to gain. Yeah, I, th I think it uh, looks like he might be a little bit short where they marked it there. But I, I, I guess the thing with him, Jason, being a four-year starter, have you gotten close to your ceiling? Yeah. So if you come back, is it coming back because there'll be a different group of quarterbacks that maybe you can get ahead of mm -hmm. to be possibly picked higher as they're going for it on fourth and short? Yeah, there's, there's no uh, lack of dice rolling for Sam Ellinger. As competitive as he is and as much as he likes to put the pedal to the floor, it's a fourth down and one, and it's a pitch. Johnson trying to find his way and he is short he's stopped by van deest in there first along with lewis that was a great job of not giving the corner not giving the edge we saw him get the edge earlier in the game for a touchdown here even though it's different back obviously rashawn johnson but great hustle by this colorado defense 
that may be a little momentum changer that they need to get this offense going a bit. It's good to see that energy from yeah. Colorado because they're playing without Nate Landman, who is an absolute tape machine. You put on Colorado's defense everywhere. Nate Landman, I, 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 I mean, we're going to talk about a guy who's not here, but is one of the one of the best players and plays with such an attitude. It is, it is a shame he got hurt and will not be playing in this game as, again, Broussard finding really no space at all to run. And this was going to be interesting. You mentioned it about Ash, the D coordinator for Texas. How is he going to call the game? You know, what does he want to do? Because there's six guys on that defense that are out. So you got young guys in. Is he going to have to blitz a little more? Are these young guys going to be able to get pressure on their own? Are they going to hold up on the edges? And right now, they're doing extremely well. Tumwa, Iowa's finest. Chris Ash as Neuer whips it down the sideline to nobody. It'll be third down coming up. I love the fact it's from Tumwa, Iowa. Radar O'Reilly. Yeah. From Mash. You got a fistful of Iowa. Sure. Uh, Iowa hometown. nice. Yeah. So uh, again, Colorado in a, in a bad situation of third and long. Now, uh, this is a team that ran way more than they passed. And Neuer, for the year that he had being an uh, all-pack 12 second team, not a great completion uh, percentage, didn't throw for a ton of yards, was, was effective at times. He needs to be here. On third down, pressure got there late. Neuer down the middle has his first strike, and it's all the way across midfield to Maurice Bell. It's a gain of 26. Boy, and that was because he had time. Now, he took a shot at the end, but that was a trip to the, to the right. And that took time for those plays to develop and those routes to develop. So the line gave him enough time, even though he took that shot at the end. Well, we know Sam Neuer's got a strong arm. We asked him about his baseball pass. Right. He was a baseball player growing up. He said, I touched 96 in high school. You don't say that casually. No, and, and he made sure to say touch. That's he right. said, I don't sit there. I touch it. He said that's his first love, is baseball. So that, that's a game he, he has always loved. And, We'll see. You know, he still has thoughts about baseball. And thoughts about coming back, certainly. The belief is that he would come back to Colorado. As this is intercepted and picked off by Texas at the 10-yard line by Overshow. That's just a bad throw by Sam. An underthrown ball. Looked like he had the tight end over the middle. He goes to the outside where, unfortunately, there is a cluster of Texas players. And then to boot, he doesn't put enough on the ball. He's got to get it over that defender's head. Not able to get it over, over, over Sean's head. He gets to pick Texas ball. My daughter-in-law asked, said, did you pet him? Said, no. In pet him? Pet him? Does that, uh, I don't I mean, think that would go well. I, there was no chance I was reaching my hand in there. I took a nice picture at distance. Considering your experience with Ralphie in the past. Wow, yeah, we're going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. I, you're not really a mascot petting type, I feel like. So Texas off the interception by Overshown. We'll start from its own 11. Bijan Robinson to the 15-yard line. Okay. We promise our graphics department is telling you the truth about his high school numbers. I mean, look at 126 carries, 38 touchdowns as a senior. 17.7 yards a carry. And by the way, he went three consecutive seasons rushing for over 2,000 yards. I, they don't just give that to you. That no. just doesn't happen. His love for the game comes through a zoom window. You don't have to meet him in person to feel that as Ellinger on the run has a first down. I love Bijan Robinson. We asked him what his favorite play of his football career was, and he said he was five years old. He took the ball and he ran backward. Yeah. And we were like, what? He, he took the ball. He ran to the wrong end ran zone. Ran the wrong he, way. He just has such a joy for running. Yeah. He wanted to go somewhere. He said, I was just having so much fun. Everybody was yelling at me. It turns out they were yelling at me to turn around. He goes, I went the whole way. Scored a touch on the, on the wrong, wrong end zone. But he said, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. Uh, that was very cool to hear. The sheer joy for the game that he has as Robinson has a short well, carry. You asked him, you know, you smile so much. You seem so happy. How do you, you know, drop a shoulder on the guy or run so tough? And he said the word that my father always said to me and my, and, and my brothers, and I've heard other places as well, is you flip that switch. I've tried yep. to teach it to my, my boys as well. 
you flip the switch, you get on the field, you get into that mode. You get off the field, you don't have to be in that football mode off the field. And he flips the switch very well. Well, Mike Jr.'s switch is he starts posting condiments on Twitter. Very true. I think is what happens. Yeah, the true. pictures of Duke's Mayo. Uh, oh, here's boy. a run for Robinson. Look out. Bijan Robinson breaks free again. Inside the 30-yard line. Left side of the offensive line. You can't at for much better than this. Just so just let's keep a look at this side of the line and the hole they're going to open. That was absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's when you just turn right around and you say, hey, thanks, guys. Man, Texas looks like they really want to be here for any questions about that. As Ellinger has got a bullseye once again, this is Woodard on a first down catch. Well, this is just pitch and catch when they want to throw it because the running is going so well, whether it's a running back, whether it's Ellinger keeping the ball, and then as soon as you look like you're going to run, linebackers are coming up and you have a nice hole right over the top. Ellinger surveying, wanted the screen. He's got Robinson. Wow. Bijan Robinson, touchdown. His second already. As I talked about earlier with Sam, it's not a flashy offense, but it's precise. Here, what makes it work is his patience. Watch how long he holds onto the ball, looking right, looking right. He gets the, the defense moving that way. A little flip over the top, untouched into the end zone. That's Sam understanding the patience of the play and taking his time. But the body language was patient as well. There was zero panic in his hands and his just physical specimen. That's that's a senior quarterback, man. It's a whole lot of snaps under your belt. That is a great point. Extra point is good. And Texas has taken a 14-0 lead. Look. We told you he likes to smile. We told you he likes to score touchdowns in whatever end zone he can get into. He's done it already, twice. Absolutely incredible what he's done. And Colorado, it's time to strap that helmet on tight and get back out to work. You get Mel Tucker leaving to go to Michigan State in February, second week of February, he said he wanted to be there for a long time. He goes to Michigan State. Carl Durrell gets hired 11 days later. He takes 10 days to build his staff. And then three weeks as he's on site, Colorado suspends all sports activities. Their first football practice, October the 9th. And then they get into the season. They go 4-0, and almost had an undefeated regular season out of nothing. Absolutely incredible what he's done and what he's going to build with a, a good amount of young players on this team and a lot of belief. Uh, they closed last year strong enough to feel like there was some positivity coming into this year, but nobody really gave them much of a chance. Picked fifth in their division in the Pac-12, and you look at what they did, you get the Pac-12 Coach of the Year and the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. Absolutely amazing, and, and one thing that, that I have to note about the season, the week they were supposed to play USC, November 28th, that game got canceled that was right before Thanksgiving, I believe on Wednesday. They got notice and they were playing San Diego State. Had two days, mm -hmm. two days to prepare for a brand new opponent. Went out, won that game, 20 to 10. So really a great testament to the coach and what he's relayed to the players. Broussard on a first down run has about seven. I, there was a great story on ESPN.com this morning about their equipment truck. Yes. That, that week of the right. three-way Pac-12 championship deal, the equipment truck was like in Albuquerque awaiting word to see which way to turn. It's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon in 2020 as Broussard dances all the way to midfield on a first down Buffalo. Well, this is what they need. I mean, they, they have got to get something going. Good job by the line up front. You saw Texas, uh, they're basically playing nice base defense. So this Colorado O-line just got to get man on man, wall off. You give Broussard a little bit of room, and he's going to make something out of it. This is not a Colorado team that's going to give up very easily. Downstairs, Chris. We talk about the crazy start to the season. Even when the Pac-12 allowed them to start practicing, Boulder County said that they could not. They could only work out one person at a time. So with the trainers, they would be there until 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. If they wanted to throw, they had to leave the county just to practice. That happened for a week before they were finally able to start up as a team. Sound like the St. Louis Cardinals who were throwing in their hotel rooms during baseball season in that first month when they had the outbreak as Broussard makes a catch. How do you think one-on-one -on -one workouts go? I mean, 
think about that for anybody that's played a team sport when you go lift together one person could lift so they were doing it all day with the strength coach from six in the morning to nine at night seven days a week one person at a time that i mean talk about a personal trainer and now <laughs> now the strength coach is like only has you to look at believe me you're getting yelled at more yeah I, I could not handle that mentally no thank you on that third down for the buffaloes could be four down territory here as neuer the senior has it tipped and it's incomplete texas's defense does not look like a team that's missing five starters yeah he had dimitri stanley wide open there on the outside you just look at the twist underneath. It was a tackle end stunt. The tackle ends up coming uh, outside, and he ends up the freshman, Alfred Collins, a guy we are going to keep our eyes on. The way the coaches talk about this young man at 6'6", 305 pounds, what way do you hear what his defensive coordinator said about it? I'm mm. setting that up as a tease, the old radio yeah. guy. In the, well, I was going to say, you did it for years. You will not believe what his D coordinator <laughs> has said about him. Coming up next. <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> here's the punt inside the 10 yard line and this will bounce in a springy way to the 15 yard line and that's where texas will set up shop hey speaking of promos and teases tomorrow it is the duke's mayo bowl wisconsin and wake forest john wolford was wake forest quarterback just a couple of years ago you never know who's going to start for the rams that's very by true, the yeah. way so right. you might see a future nfl quarterback in this game wake forest wisconsin one of the great social media bowl games by the way the duke's mayo bowl always does a great job should be a fun one noon eastern time should be though i just kept thinking about the mayo i put on my turkey sandwich i'm sorry uh, I, I lost you on that i don't think you're sorry at all honestly when you're thinking about food first down for texas from the 15 this is ellinger to throw everything just looks simple for him right now mechanically and it's incomplete over the outstretched arms of moore and christian gonzalez a, a true freshman on the colorado side a kid starting from day one good coverage right there doesn't look back right away so there was a chance for moore to get that catch but but you got to give Gonzalez a lot of credit right on him. Had that left hand up in the, in the grill of Moore to kind of block his view. Incomplete, second and ten. Good job by the true freshman. A Texas native, Gonzalez. It'll be second down for Ellinger. They've used that jet sweep action, and that is absolutely upended. Down goes Whittington. He got popped hard by Makai Blackman. Well, that's just playing your responsibility, not getting fooled by motion knowing exactly where you need to be and then making the play that's good sound discipline defense don't get fooled by any of the window dressing play your area boy pre-snap motion has increased so much in the nfl this year and we see it trickling down to college as we got a third and 11. yeah and a lot of it is, is window dressing it really is ellinger down the sideline a lot of contact and it is incomplete looked like the contact was initiated at first by the Texas wide receiver, yeah, Washington. Washington. Yeah, there's Blackman again. So he makes a great tackle behind the line, and then he comes up. You, we, we've seen now both corners running with their men extremely well, staying right on them. Great defensive play. Bill Lamagne, our rules analyst, is waving incomplete. He doesn't see any pass interference. Oh, and listen, if he did, we'd be fighting. I mean, if he said there was any kind of pass interference there. <laughs> One time for Texas and Cameron Dicker. Stanley back to receive. That is a whale of a punt to the sideline at the 32. And Colorado will have the football with 2.40 to go in the first. Look, Sam Neuer, safety last year, thought about transferring, visited other Pac-12 schools. He gets the phone call. Darren Chivarini, the offensive coordinator, says, I'm back in the OC spot. Why don't you come try out for the quarterback position? He wins it, and then Broussard, you talk about the knee injuries. What he's done is nothing short of miraculous. And, and that's coming back from injuries, which we've seen people do. But again, two ACLs on the same knee a year after another is incredible. But Neuer, back up, back up go from quarterback to safety, almost transfer, and then get second team all Pac-12 was really amazing. Hell, oh, it just dropped yeah. by Arias. Yeah, I mean, that, that. listen, when you're down 14 zip, you got to make, have to make, well, I don't care if you're up 14 zip, you got to make that play. You put it right there, you have some room to run after it, now again, you're playing behind the sticks at second and 10. Their last drive was the first drive they finally had where they got to play in front of the sticks for a couple of first downs before they had to punt it away. And it was Broussard who got him there, who so far has 29 yards on seven carries, most of that coming on the one run that got him a first down. 
Off play action, Neuer will throw. It's a deep ball for Neuer, and it's batted away beautifully. Incomplete, Josh Thompson with picture-perfect defense. What a great job. I won't say anything, I think, about the hand he had grabbing the jersey a little bit. I'm not going to say a word because he was running step for step. See that right hand tugging on Ooh. the jersey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he got away with one there. That's okay. So the picture-perfect part was the hand that was the, laid. The picture-perfect uh -huh. part was the hand that came up and blocked the ball. The ground, hey, listen, you know what? If they didn't call it, you know what it wasn't? Pass interference. <laughs> you got to laugh from our rules <laughs> analyst, Bill LaMagne, on that. Neuer oh, off the screen. Oh, no, he did Popped not. up in the air no. and taken away. Oh, there he is. That's the true freshman, Alfred Collins. I mean, unbelievable. Now, he, he set it up. And listen, this was going to be a screen. He just started backing off the block and went up, and I, and I almost, I believe it was a one-handed pick. I mean, look at this. He, you see him back off, gets one paw up there, and comes down with it. Unbelievable what he does. Great awareness to start to back off and block it. So I'm going to go and tell you right now, Chris Ash, Chris Ash, in the places he has coached, he has coached at Wisconsin, he has coached J.J. Watt, he has coached at Ohio State, he has coached the Bosa brothers. He said Alfred Collins has the chance to be better than those guys are. He said he is the freakiest athlete he has ever seen for that size. I mean, you talk about that company. We looked and we said, okay, you know, we'll we'll see, yeah, right? You think yeah. that's the first thing you think. That's an outrageous play by Alfred Collins as Texas will run it, not get a whole lot for Roshan Johnson. You know, Keandre Coburn, his defensive line mate, said about Collins, I think he's the most athletic player on our team. And I know your eyes lit up. I mean, it's, yeah, listen, because that's where, you know, that's where the athletes are, right, on the D-line. I think we all understand that. Uh -huh. And I'm very happy that Mr. Collins just proved that point. Just an outlandish play. Like, could be one of the best of yeah. bowl season that we just saw. As Ellinger lingers in the pocket and climbs and has a strike across the 30-yard line to Brendan Schooler. He's playing without Brennan Eagles, who opted out today, one of their deep threats. It'll be third down for Ellinger. One thing you'll see with Ellinger is he will spread the ball around. First game against UTEP, seven different receivers caught a touchdown, ten different players. Seven different receivers have caught a game, uh, caught a ball in seven different games. So he is an equal opportunity guy with that ball. Yeah, he throwing is. Throwing it out. That's another feather in the cap of Ellinger and saying, you know what? I don't have one guy I go to. I find what the defense has given me, and I'll, I'll hit that guy. Playing without his regular center, who's out with injury as well, as Ellinger oh. throws it, and it's incomplete, nearly intercepted. He wanted the slant for Joshua Moore, and Makai Blackman had goal line eyes there. I'll tell you what, Blackman and Gonzalez, we saw the other, the two corners for Colorado, down, down early here, obviously, but these two guys are playing well. And this is another one, again, a chance right through his hands because he was going to score, no doubt about it. Mm. As we now get Cameron Cameron Dicker out there to try a field goal, 45-yarder. Long of 48 this year, an Austin native out of Lake Travis High School. Trying to give Texas a three-score lead early in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Nope, did not do it, hooked it. You are correct. That is no good and wide, and so Colorado will get it back with a minute three here in the first. So again, you have a situation. Defense came up, gave him a chance. Now can the offense do something with it? Downstairs to Chris. Yeah, Darren Cheverini brought over the entire offense, gathered them together, and said, I want you to stop looking at the scoreboard. You're playing like they're better than us, and they're not. You're not getting open. You're not tackling. You're not moving the pile. I want from now on to act like it is 0-0 the beginning of the game from this point. I'd play for Chris right now. That was a good point. Well, well, and But it's a great point that you said that, that he talked about is you, there's plenty of time. You don't have to get out of your offense. Still try and do your things. Run your offense like they do there. You get five yards on first down. You know, now you're, again, you're, you're, you're ahead in the count, basically. Second now, and they, it, the short, the, the playbook is open up to you. Do something with it, though. That was Katie Nixon, the wide receiver, who sometimes will end up in the backfield. And now Broussard with a juke one way. And it's going to be third down and a couple. What's your play call here? What do you like? Well, I mean, listen, if it's going to be a pass, it's going to be a short one. At this point, you run, so, you just, 
I don't, you need, to what, two and a half yards? Get three. Just enough to move the change. You don't need a big play here. Just keep control of the ball. That's what you want to do right now. Third down and two. We'll see if they even pull the trigger yeah. on this one. Doesn't or, look like they're yeah. going to. Take a breath here. I mean, the playbook will be open to them for run to pass. 14-0 Texas after one. Sam Ellinger in a city that is so special to him and his family. And the Horns up 14 to nothing in what could be his final collegiate start. Three days to the college football playoff semifinal. The large family and the family of college football lost a member of it uh, recently. Utah announced that running back Ty Jordan passed away last week. He was 19. Pac-12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. Both teams earlier at the Valero Alamo Bowl engaged in a moment of silence on behalf of Ty Jordan and we're thinking about his family and everybody at Utah and just such an awful, awful loss in college football and beyond. And uh, a great touching tribute here in San Antonio at the Valero Alamo Bowl where Utah played last year as Colorado trails coming into this second quarter 14 to nothing, and a big drive right now for the yeah, Buffaloes. Yeah, and just to finish up quickly, a nice moment of silence by both teams showing their respect, which was a, a really a great thing to do. And, of course, our thoughts and prayers are to the family mm -hmm. as well. And, and as you mentioned, that was a, a big first down now for Colorado. Sam Neuer dances to the 44. It'll be second down for the Buffaloes. What have you seen on tape from Sam Neuer? Well, what does he do best? Well, what he does, control an offense, like... I, I hate to use the word manage. You uh -huh. know, you say that, and all of a sudden you're saying, oh, he's not very good. But he does do that well. Here, not so much. Pulled the ball. Uh, he should have given it on that one and pulled. That was that was the wrong the wrong read there. Tried to get outside and couldn't do it. But he does. He manages well. Like I said, doesn't have a great completion percentage and hasn't thrown for a lot of yards. But they don't. They run the ball a lot more than they throw. So they're just looking for him to make the correct decisions. And that's the one thing. Uh, that Coach Chivarini has said, he said he's become better at, remember, this is for, he's, he's been around a while, but it's his first year starting. So there's a big, there's a learning curve to go through. Last time they were here in San Antonio, he was signaling plays from the sidelines. Now he is the starting quarterback, and he's inaccurate there. It'll be fourth down. That was a little low into the outside of Jerry Rice's son, Brendan, fourth down. So we've had some plays where he has been off with the ball, or the ball has been batted down, or the ball has been dropped. So right now, the passing game part of it just not in sync. And if they can't get even a short part of the passing game in sync, it's going to be very difficult to get the running game going. Important to note, the guy you saw behind him there on the sideline, Brendan Lewis, Carl Durrell mentioned this week that he wants to get Brendan Lewis, the freshman quarterback out of Melissa, Texas, a series or two in the first half of this game. So if you see Lewis, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make a change at quarterback. It might just be planned already as this goes into the end zone. Uh, there are no quarterback questions at Texas. There are not at all, and Sam brings it back on the field. Colorado defense has stepped up the last couple of drives. Let's see what Sam could do when we come back. Again, it's not flashy, but Jason, it is so efficient at what he does, and he does it so nonchalantly as well. And he's grown so much. You asked him what he got better at, and he basically said, what, what have I not gotten better at yeah. in my four years at Texas? He was sort of blindly making great plays, and now he understands the process and the skeleton of this offense as he keeps it there. Robinson was going to get tied up, but... Sam Ellinger started this season as one of a big group of captains. Yes. He was a guy with a lot of guys, including his center, Kerstetter, and so many, Osai, and, and so many key players. And now he's really the only guy left. Yeah, you know, it's a shame when they lost this one right here with the, with the broken ankle. And these are all the captains, and he is the only one active tonight. I mean, that's what's happened to this team with, with the opt-out to guys that want, want to get ready for the NFL. Very fitting they were playing Lean on Me by yes. Bill Withers over the loudspeaker during the break. Quick hitter for Ellinger, and Jordan Whittington won't get a whole lot. Chris downstairs. Well, when a lot of the Texas players started to opt out, Ellinger went to his team and he said, listen, I challenge you, what, what do you love about football? Do you love the result or do you love playing the game? Because if you love playing the game, even when the goal is out of reach, you still keep going. Ellinger, a cannon shot down the right sideline, oh, and it's play. incomplete. Oh, my goodness gracious. 
A jumping effort on the sideline to bat it away by Gonzalez. I mean, again, the true freshman. We've talked about Gonzalez and Blackman, the two corners. They are absolutely step for step with these outside receivers for Texas. Looks back at the proper time and, oh, gets that left hand on it. Let me tell you. The Colorado defense has been giving their offense some chances, and a lot of it is thanks to their two corners in Blackman and in Gonzalez. It's tough to play DB nowadays. Yes, it is. These guys have done it very well so far tonight. Stanley back to receive from Cameron Dicker. Play clock hit zero. I don't think we'd get a delay a game all night considering the pace and tempo we're getting. So full snap, delay of game. Number 17 offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So Colorado should end up with their best field position of the night right now. If we can get a, a re, if we can get a return, or even if it's a fair catch, it should be a pretty good field position. Bill Lamagne, a rules expert, how do you feel when we don't hear from the official for very long like that? It's been hey, a long time. I, I think they've been having a great game. They're letting them play. The defense has been doing their job, and the officials are letting them go. So I, I, I like the job that the SEC crew is doing tonight. It's a long time without a flag, and Colorado will have it when we come back. It is bowl season. We're thrilled to be here. The players are too, and now there's a marker down because we brought Bill in to talk about we how did. there weren't any markers. Don't know if the refs are contractually obligated to have to talk a certain amount during the game. We don't know these Bill, things. that's not a stipulation <laughs> in bowl season, is it? Holding number 54. Kicking team. A 10-yard penalty be added to the end of the play. First down. Start, starting at midfield. Colorado's best field position. Time for them to do something with it. Let's go. Exactly. It means that this was the plan to get him what he's earned, at least a run, one series or two. And then you see what happens. And listen, if a spark all of a sudden comes to this offense, you know, if he, by either throwing or running and with him leading it, then we'll see, you know, I wouldn't be shocked to see him more in this game. We have seen in this ball game some great quarterbacking histories, including somebody who wore similar colors, Drew Brees, about 20 years ago in the Valero Alamo Bowl. It'll be a handoff on first down, and Broussard is just spiked down immediately. How about this Texas defense? David Benda that time to set up second down. And again, a lot of young players, new players, because of all the opt-outs on defense that uh, the defensive coordinator was talking about. How was he going to be able to play that? Chris Ash, am I going to have to add more pressure? Am I going to have to blitz more? Are these guys going to be able to handle it one-on-one? -on -one? In his first opportunity as a Colorado Buffalo, Lewis stepping up to run. Lewis inside the 45. It'll be third down and manageable. So that was that was a little bit of nerves there, Jason, I'm going to tell you, because he had Matt Lynch wide open the tight end in the middle of the field. Just throw mm. it to him. You got him right there, right in the middle of the field. He's there. He doesn't throw it to him. He says, okay, I'm going to take off and run. Gain good yards. Don't get me wrong. So he's just going to need to settle in a little bit. Well, he rushed for 3,200 yards yeah. as a high school player at Melissa, Texas High School. On the run. They will get to the outside with Broussard across the 35 and a hug tied down to the 30-yard line. So here's the thing. You, you, for Texas, they know I can't give them the edge. And they didn't. The player was there, correct? He's right where he needs to be, except... That man, Jared Broussard, said, you can go ahead and be there. I'm going to I'm gonna go two-way on you, take the inside, and bust it back outside for a big play. Coming off the knee injury, all he did in his first game was score three touchdowns on 31 carries, and he runs hard, just like Fontenot did last year, who's injured this season. Oh, see, this is the little mistakes. Mm -hmm. You get movement on the line, so now it goes to first and 15. But, you know, you mentioned Lewis. Ball snap, false start, number 70, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. I mean, incredible what he has done. You know, his sophomore year, he was first-team All-State, led his team to the takes, uh, Texas State Championship, totaled over 4,000 yards and 48 touchdowns. That was his sophomore year, let alone when he was named the player of the year, his senior year. 
He was born a week after Colorado beat Texas in the Big 12 title game in 2001. As they'll run it again, and Broussard gets spiked one more time. Big hit by Josh Thompson. Yeah, Josh Thompson came up. He got juked the last time. So he's yeah, like, he okay, you know what? This, this, this time I'm going to try and square you up a little better than that and not, uh, not, not commit too early. Came up with a nice tackle there, gain of, gain of four. What are you thinking as a defensive lineman when you see fresh meat in at a quarterback spot? Well, you, you want to you obviously disrupt him, take his timing off. And you saw it in the first pass. He, he, he had time to make the throw, but he's also very dangerous with his feet. So you, you want to think about containment as well. Fake to Stanley. And off the spin, not a lot there for Lewis. It'll be third down. Yeah, again, a planned play there, not a reading play, because if it was a reading play, he would have wanted to give it to the to the, uh, the the ball carrier there. So that's a planned run, which which he has done and which he can do. But now here he is in a third and long situation, a situation Colorado has been in more than a few times tonight. What do you think Chris Ash calls defensively for Texas here? Well, they played straight up. All the most we've seen was some twists by the line, by the D-line. We haven't seen a blitz. They haven't needed to. So I would doubt you would see one, and you don't. Third down and eight for Lewis, and he sends it on its way to the corner, and this is caught by Stanley. First and goal, Colorado. That was an excellent throw. That was a throw to a spot. That you know the you know the route he's going to run. No blitz. He had plenty of time, and you throw it to the spot. You know the the, uh, the corner route that's getting run. Throw it up in the air and let your guy get to it. Joe Davis, the tailback. He is swarmed, oh. just in golf. Goodness gracious. Collins and Jones and everybody else in white and burnt orange. Yeah, oh, that was a meeting at the running back right there. I know you love that. Oh, absolutely. Without question. You live for that. So let's see what they do. You know, yeah, again, a quarterback that can certainly make some different moves. You let him make a choice here? Well, I, I, I'm going to say either play action or, or I, I'm going to think it's either going to be a straight handoff or Lewis is going to keep it running himself. We got timeout Texas. So Chris, Chris Ash will think it over. Colorado knocking on the door for the first time today. Scoreless so far. Six runs, one pass on the drive so far. Why does this drive matter so well, much? Well, listen, I mean, and the drive matters, not points, too. They need seven here. To be this close, you, you got to be able to knock it in. I would expect a handoff to Broussard, trying to get him either outside or the quarterback keeping it. I don't know if they're going to want him to pass the ball here, so I think it'll still be safe on second down here. As Broussard now is out in the slot. He's out to the left, so let's see if he motions in. Broussard is out here. Let's see if he motions in or they keep it empty. Are they trying to spread him out? No, he's going to come back in and try and get him out. There's a the quarterback. It is Lewis. Oh, he's stonewalled by the middle of that Texas defense. They are playing absolutely lit up. Benda was in there and the whole cavalry. Nice job again playing disciplined football. Let your outside man take that. You take care of everything else. You know, don't try and get in someone else's area. That was a nice job there. And... and Listen, they must have been thinking the same thing I was, either wide to Broussard or the quarterback up the middle, because they were certainly ready for it. All right, now third down and goal for Colorado. It's Broussard with a sidestep, and he swarmed again. So fourth down, you're going for it, you're taking the points. I, I would, I, I almost think they want to take the points to say we got something out of it. They had a good drive, they got down there. I think you want to come away with something. It looks like they're going to stay out and go for it. So what do I know? you got to get in the end zone at some point, though. And it is, I mean, you're playing with house money. It's bowl season. It, it is. I, I get that. I agree. I guess my, my point is you haven't had a drive down there all, all night long. You're getting there. Maybe try and get something out of it. Because this would be a huge, huge shift to Texas momentum if they stop them here. And what a swell of sound from all the Longhorn fans in this building at the Alamo Dome. Broussard. To the outside, spinning, Broussard oh. at the goal line, he wow. got in! Oh, wow! You talk about wanting it! Let me tell you, that was Broussard. That was all 5'9", 185 pounds, because Texas read this well. It was overloaded to the left, and Texas played it. There's one, two, three, four, five guys had a shot at him. He does the last spin and dives in. I thought he was going to get tackled behind the line. Texas had the right defense called. They were there to make the play, but Jarek Broussard, 
on that two times ACL repaired knee does all that to get in the end zone. They're going to look at it. Bill Lamagne, our rules analyst, is here along with us. We'll check in with Bill as we get another look at this. First flush, Bill, what do you see? You know, when I saw it live, I thought, what a great play he did with that spin move. And it, it obviously appeared he was over. They're going to look to see with the knee down. Okay, the knee was down. It's just a matter of where the ball was, Where's right? the ball? Yeah. Watch again, and we'll watch with you, Bill. You've got a vantage point that we do, too. Can you see the knee there? So the thing here, Bill, that I think it's important for people to understand is you can piece together different pictures, correct? Yes, and replay has the ability. They call it the quad screen. <laughs> where they can look at four different views. They can see when the knee is down from one angle, and then they can see where the ball actually is from another angle. I, I'm going to say right now, I think it's a touchdown. I think they called that on the field. I have not seen anything yet, because you, you know his knee was down there, but from that view, you can't see now where the ball is now maybe here. It, again, this is where what you said when you with the quad box and you start piecemealing it together I don't think this is going to be overturned. Though. I think this stays a touchdown. I have a touchdown Yeah, and one thing I do a little differently is as an official. I never the review the ruling on the field stands touchdown I'm never gonna say I think but I'm gonna tell you here's the call. Yeah And, and you're to your point Mike you heard the official say stands Yes. And the reason is the call on the field needs to be overturned by indisputable video evidence. It was not there. It remains a touchdown for Broussard, and Colorado gets a big score. You talked about how important it was. Moro Ojimo had a crack at him at about the two-yard sure line, and he had some shoulder pad but couldn't find the ears on him. Like I said, go for it all the way. I never would have kicked the field goal there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what just an absolute hustle play. Because like I said, Texas read this well. They were It was overloaded. They read it well. They had people where it needed to be. And that young man just said, uh-uh. And for Brendan Lewis, right, the quarterback comes on in his first opportunity, and he is just juiced. Well, he is. He hits the one big uh, corner route on the throw, runs pretty well. I, I'm gonna, I'm, I would imagine you're going to have to keep him in there to see what he could do the next drive. Let's see if this Colorado defense, which has really stood up to Texas the last few drives, if they can do it again. That is a great point. Sam Ellinger so far, 7 for 12, 82 yards. Bijan Robinson had some big runs early. We haven't seen nope. much of him since. Deshaun Jamison back to receive. And this to the edge will find its way to the corner for a touchback, but barely. And so the 25-yard line is where Texas will have it. Hey, look, it's the college football playoff semifinals New Year's Day on ESPN and the ESPN app. And my partner certainly doesn't have a skin in the game and doesn't have a, a vested interest in any way. Do you? Listen. Do you? Go Irish. Well, I mean, come on. Say. Yeah. Well, uh, so, okay, convince me. you got 30 seconds to convince me Notre Dame will beat Alabama. I don't think I had the time to run at the line okay. now. We have to run wow. play. I didn't so. think you were a cop-out feeder, but you're going to go there. We'll huh? get to that. Okay. That's Good interesting. That. Interesting. I, I thought you might have a little I don't want to take away from these young oh. men on the field. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How upstanding. Your moral compass well, uh, yeah. survived the travel. It's fantastic. First down for the 25 for the Texas Longhorns, and they will run it. And it'll be Roshan Johnson who is driven back. Uh, the one thing we can see very clearly from our vantage point here is everybody on the field really wants to be in this game yeah. and cares a heck of a lot about the result of and, this And you love to see that because the bowl games have really taken a wrap over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. This is good to see. Ellinger off the screen gets to the outside and the catch by Woodard. His second, it's third down. Third and four. Again, big either way. This should be Colorado could get another stop out of this. They tried to substitute on defense, but up-tempo Texas right to the line, so they couldn't do it. No opportunity given. Ellinger steps back into a throw. Ellinger and a diving try over on the edge, and it's incomplete. Cavante Dixon, the true freshman, he says, I had a catch, but of course you do. That's what you do. It looked like this did bounce. You see him have it there? Well, I don't know. Wow, okay. Now, again, this was called incomplete on the field. 
We've gotten two looks at it, so we'll bring in Bill Lamagne, it look, our look rules like analyst. Wow, boy. I see that ball moving when he hits the ground and the ball's touching the ground. He does not have firm control of the ball. This is an incomplete pass. Very decisive. And you know what? I'm going to give you another cookie for that one, Bill. <laughs> but the play is also under review at this point. That's true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Spoke too and, soon. And I can't control what replay does. That's. But, but again, the call... It, uh, goes to the call on the field was incomplete. Ruling on the field of incomplete pass is under further review. So we're going to need, again, the irrefutable. What, just what you said, Jason, you're right. When you hear play stands, that means there was not enough info to turn it over. If you hear play is confirmed, that means there was enough info of what we saw to, to keep that call. So he's got both. It looks like he had his left hand under it, and then it was on his right forearm. Boy, oh, boy. Okay, his left hand is under it there. Now, did it hit the ground there, or was it on his right forearm? Because I agree, Bill, he lost control of it, but when he lost control of it, was the ball on his right forearm at that point? The ball, I see the ball touch yeah, the ground. I, I think that view right there, guys, that view you had there, If you, you, we could freeze that, and when we go back to that one, there's a point to freeze it where I, I agree, I see the ball hitting After the ground. After review, the road the field stands, fourth down. Whew, glad we got there that go. one. Right. I don't like the scene of confirm on that one. Yeah, I agree. Look, you're going to see the ball. I think right, a little more right there, right there. I think yep. it hits the ground. I, I I absolutely agree with you, Bill. I think that hit the ground. Bill Lamagne, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Detective Mike Golick, Senior, finding the small piece of evidence. I always like trying to give an answer to something. If I get wrong, I don't get graded down. So, <laughs> oh, I care. <laughs> Life's graded on a curve, but there are no grades in this telecast. Dicker the putt. Stanley got eaten up by that in the lights. I mean, domes are interesting, certainly, and Stanley found that out. Seven-point game in the Valero Alamo Bowl. That was close. Otto into the end zone for a touchdown and getting the ball back, trying to tie the ball game. And for more on him, downstairs to Chris. Well, his teammates having fun with him as soon as he came over. They fixed his headband, told him, hey, you're, you're going to be on TV. you got to look good. The guy who's maybe the most happy for him, Sam Neuer. He was the first one out there to congratulate him, sat with him on the bench, talked about what they saw, giving him some good positivity. That is like the most relatable thing ever as Broussard gets hit. you got to have a friend when you've never been on TV before to say, fix your collar. What are you doing there? Put your headband on. Oh, yeah, you you, you got to have those kind of friends. And it's good when you do. It's the, the tough part is when somebody doesn't tell you, and you do, do look not as good as you want to on TV. Nice job there by Devondre Sweat. Not last, letting that play get outside. That, that last drive was the best drive of the game so far for the Colorado Buffaloes, and it came with Lewis in at quarterback for Sam Neuer. He gets his second series here, and the freshman is on target to the 27-yard line, and this is KD Nixon. Good so throw. Third down. Good throw. Easy throw. You know, get don't don't you don't need the big play there. They had did have the one big play on the one corner out when he made a great throw. You just want to keep moving the sticks here and get a nice consistent drive going. Don't have to worry about any kind of long pass here. Just get the first down. Important too because if you don't, Texas ends up with pretty decent field position, yep. you would imagine. You know, Broussard just seven catches on the air. He's a guy that I would love to get involved in the passing game more to get him in open space. And a whistle. First charge timeout, Colorado. 30 second timeout. Jalen Ford was creeping up to the line. And a timeout called by the Buffaloes. Entertaining first half here so far. Texas, look, it's old hat for them to be in a bowl game. They're 53 and 22 under Tom Herman. Colorado hasn't won a bowl game since 2004 when Gary Barnett was a head coach. And with the way this game started, it looked like it was going to continue. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Texas took it to him and he thought, uh oh, okay, so this is where your coach, who's only been there since February 23rd, you know, the one thing about Carl Durrell is he has a calming presence. He yeah. is a very even, we were in college at the same time. We've, we've had kind of the same career going along. I've known him for a bit. He's very even keel, and he brings that to the players because what you would get when you're getting run out of the place early on is your players freaking out a little bit. And, you know, as Chris talked about, yeah, Darren Cheverini, the old coordinator, telling the guys to calm down. You know, that comes from Carl Durrell, that, that even keel, that, okay, let's settle down. There's still a lot of time for us to get in our game. 
He third down here, and Lewis off a low snap, gets hit and pinballed around, and down he goes. So you saw in the long play when he ran the corner route, it was a four-man rush. They didn't rush him. He had time. Guess what they did this time? They brought a little bit of pressure. They said, all right, young guy, let's see if you can do it quickly. They have to make some quick decisions. Now, all of a sudden, here's the pressure. Let's bring it straight up the gut. One guy steps in to pick up. You don't have enough for the other man. Now he's got to tuck it. So there's the difference. And something that Chris Ass talked about is how am I going to call this? They weren't getting pressure with four, so now they'll mix it up a bit. With everybody he's down, Chris Ash deserves a lot of credit so far. That is a boomer. As a flag comes in, it's all the way back to the 20-yard line for Jamison. And he is belted down at about the 25, and we'll check the marker. That was a fantastic punt. That one just absolutely turned over. You know, you see all the, the Australian punters, you know, kicking that with the point down. You don't see the ones that take off like the spiral anymore, like that one just did. That was a rocket ship. Yeah, that was. Josh Watts. Here in a kick, holding number 25 receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick, first and 10. So that'll back up Texas a little more and you have to give a whole lot of credit while this Colorado offense has been inconsistent mm -hmm. some good some bad got a score the defense from the beginning of the game when they were out of sync they have been the most consistent part of Colorado by far given their offense chances and now they're going to be asked to do it again and credit to the Buffaloes for doing that as well without Nate Landman who we asked the coaching staff uh, would he be here to travel and they said he was too ornery to be on the sideline and well, yeah, he he's Gary Bertier from remember the times huh. remember when he got yeah. hurt he was laying in the hospital bed and the nurse came in and he's going nuts that, that's that's Landman oh. they said well no we don't want him around anybody you don't want to get Landman when, when he's yeah. not in a good mood he is one of the best though in the Pac-12 a tremendous talent as Ellinger from about the five will have to play pitch and catch. He's got a completion to Whittington. And Whittington down the sideline with a huge cater for the Longhorns across the 40-yard line. That was about as easy as pitch and catch. I, I love Sam Ellinger in the pocket. He is just so calm. And here they go, up tempo. He wants to go deep. Yeah, he had the pump yep. fake. Oh, he goes seam pattern. And Cade Brewer rumbling inside the 25. Darian Rakeshaw, number three, absolutely got fooled on that one. The little stop and go. Right to the right, it just got run by. And that was the big uh-oh as that was going on. And Texas is just going to keep the pedal to the metal. Which is the way Sam Ellinger appreciates it as Robinson on the run. We were talking to Tom Herman. He said, how competitive is Sam Ellinger? He said, well, last year we went up 14. Sam got on a headset and he said, we going to keep the pedal down or are we going to lay off like we usually do? Yeah. He said, Tom got a little hot on him on yeah, that he one. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So he got, got a little hot. How about he said, how about you play and we coach? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But then they, they both laughed at it. Yeah. You know, they have a great relationship, but that's the confidence and the competitiveness of Sam Ellinger. He was just fantastic to talk to. And I loved asking him how it was from his freshman year to now and yeah. just how he said, I had no idea what I was doing my freshman year. Basically said he lucked into yeah, some yeah. great plays. I made a bit great play and I had no idea how I did it. Ellinger kept his feet, spun out of it. Ellinger wants to run and that's the other thing he does. So a rare mistake though by Ellinger. You yep. got to throw that ball away. Right. You know, he got by the first man and then I thought he was going to throw it away and he saw the other guy was coming up and, and that he ends up losing yard. It just dumped the ball off. You know, that's, that's one where he's going to try and make something happen. And like I, I was talking with him last night, there's the part of knowing when the journey is over. That's right. <laughs> Ellinger on third down, little head fake. Wow. And he is drilled and sacked. Down goes Ellinger. It was Mustafa Johnson. And now Texas is driven well back. 12 sacks by Colorado this year. That's a great rush by Johnson right right up the middle right over the guard right over or majors I should say the center excellent job because that's the place where quarterbacks don't want the pressure we keep talking about the outside and blind side they don't like the pressure when it's coming straight at them and all of a sudden there's all that garbage around them as we're going to get a field goal attempt here yeah it'll be interesting to see if they do go through with it at 52 yards but you mentioned the center Jake Majors true freshman center in for Kerstetter who's injured 
Ellinger spoke very highly of him, but game situations are different, well, bowl situations. And, and I asked, I said, you know, is Sam making all the calls or are they letting, you know, normally the center does? And they said, he's incredibly smart. And said Sam said, I'll back away and let him make the calls. And he said, occasionally I have to correct him. He said, but for the most part, he's been getting it right. It's, it's great mentoring by, by Sam. From 52 for Dicker. Oh, and this one is a beauty, wow. yeah. Well, he missed earlier, and Dicker drills that one to make it 17-7. Boy, that was, a, that was a nice long kick there. Excellent snap, hold, and kick right down the middle into the net, too. He definitely had some room. Love the kicker holder celebration. Yeah. A little headbutt, a <laughs> little act like you've been there, there. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, bowl season continues on. We got a great one here. And the first of the New Year's six games is a top 10 matchup. Eight Eastern, five Pacific tomorrow night. Heisman finalist Kyle Trask and Florida against Oklahoma. Texas fans, your thoughts. And then on New Year's Day, noon Eastern ESPN and the ESPN app, a Cincinnati team that had as good of a season as anybody. And how, how about them? And, but unfortunately, we know what the college playoff committee thought of them. Oh. They wouldn't play and they drop. They keep dropping them I mean, when they weren't playing. I mean, they, they didn't get a whole lot of respect there. That's one of the best defenses yeah. you're going to see. Yep. Luke Fickle is a tremendous coach feel like you put them up against anybody they got a shot but they were not going to get a crack at the college football playoff sadly as we check in in the studio for your son's favorite play-by-play -play announcer <laughs> Matt Perry oh thank you for that Benetti who else would it be coming up on the cap one halftime report we had a classic in the cheese it bowl between Miami and Oklahoma State highlights of that one plus what's Bama's defense got a new against Ian Book in Notre Dame plus Florida they're going to be shorthanded. Can they pull off the upset against Oklahoma? And you know who I bet does some damage to some Cheez-Its? Not Golick Jr., Golick Sr. You crush Cheez-Its? Oh, listen, by the handful. You, <laughs> and I mean multiple handfuls. Just lean back and drop them in like a waterfall? Wow. S Sam Neuer back out to play quarterback. Two series for Lewis. Neuer snaps it off to the far sideline, and he's right there for Arias for a first down with under two to go. Excellent throw, and a lot of that based on the fact it was a longer route. He had time. We saw earlier when Texas brought the pressure, they forced Lewis into a little quicker decision. No pressure this time. Neuer has time to stand in the pocket. Zone defense, find the hole, drop it in. Clock stops with the out of bounds. First down from the 42. Play action for Neuer. Got Senior him. on the catapult. Oh. Just missed him. Overthrown for Arias. You're right. He had him by a couple of steps. Well, I mean, that's one. That's one. As soon as you throw it, you wonder if he wanted to pull the string on that, knowing he overthrew it. Drake, go route there. He's got him. Two steps. That's going to be a touchdown if that ball drops in there. The one thing I noticed about Neuer when he threw the deep ball uh, in, in warm-up, it, it doesn't go very high. It, throw, it throws. He's got a good arm, but it goes a little more flat. Throw that ball higher and give your receiver a chance to run underneath it. Which goes exactly to what he just did with that mime. He was saying, yep. get more under it, Sam. He was talking to himself as he'll throw run. on second down, and now he'll keep it. Neuer across midfield, and Neuer scrambles out of bounds. Well done to find his way to the sideline. That's a great job. Great job getting to the sidelines. Understands the coverage. He's some man, some zone, too, really. He saw, saw room. And nobody near him enough knew he could get the first down, but even extra there to get out of bounds. Three carries, 21 yards. Neuer has not been terribly accurate tonight. The senior from about 10 miles west of Portland in Beaverton, Oregon. Play action for Neuer. Got him. He does on the edge. Stanley turns upfield. And Dimitri Stanley at first down, Colorado. That's KD Nixon running the goal route, trying to take the defense with him. And then Stanley cutting right underneath it. Look, three goes straight. Take the defender with him. He cuts right underneath. Ball right on time. Great, great tandem route there on what you were trying to accomplish. Dimitri Stanley out of Aurora, Colorado. His father, Walter, a former 
Buffalo player in the 1980s as we get a timeout with 133 to go with an injured player for the Texas Longhorns once again it's Tavondre Sweat the defensive lineman and man they cannot afford no. anybody going down on the defensive line no I mean listen yeah we, we have seen too many players on that defense already not even here tonight so thin as it is Hey, this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. I would say they're in insurance, but Chris Budden down on the sideline says insurance. She does. Insurance. She, uh, you know, tomato, tomato. Yeah. yeah. Insurance. I say Popeye. You do? I get mocked for that all the sailor time. man yeah you're talking about popeye the sailor how man. often do you talk about popeye is Listen. the question that i have for you <laughs> popeye's big in our house right? he is big spinach guy mike yeah. golick senior <laughs> wow well didn't yeah. know you had that in the arsenal occasionally. occasionally let's see what colorado has in their arsenal if they can get in you know make this a one score game either way with seven or three last time you mentioned three they got seven Broussard on the run and Collins is there to swarm him second down coming up so again and, and I'm, I'm glad they tried because they threw their way down here and they have the time to try to, to try and run the ball and maybe see if they could break one here obviously you'd love seven but this is one of those if you're in a situation you're going to take points because uh -huh. you either way if you get points on this you're going to get it to a one score game Texas gets the ball out of halftime they deferred the oh, first half. Him. Neuer, yeah. high ball, oh. it is not caught. Wow, they had a chance. Lynch, the tight end. Oh, Matt Lynch, just great route straight. You see him it breaks right inside the defender. The ball just a little mm. high. Neuer's been a little inconsistent, right? Yep. He's been yep. off early on. He's on in a couple of these throws. That one you got to hit. That one you got to make. And I'm sure even if you're you're Lynch, you're like, okay, I got I got to be able to make the catch as well. But that certainly could have been thrown better. Third down and eight. What's your call? Well, again, you don't have to go to the end zone. You can get a first down. Let's see if Texas brings some pressure. I'd say they're going to go to the outside. They twist. Neuer scrambling. Oh, boy. Neuer's hit yeah. and drop. Down he goes. Texas got there with five guys eventually, and it'll be fourth down for Colorado. Eventually, it was Broughton who hit him. So, again, we've been talking about four guys rushing. This time, it's five, as you mentioned. No room. And, and again, he wanted to break back to the outside. Someone got fronted him. Didn't have any time to even get rid of the ball to try and throw it to keep the line of scrimmage up further. So, they ended up losing yards, and now they're going to have a longer field goal. And now a sneaky opportunity here for Texas. Even if the field goal goes through, you've got to believe Sam Ellinger, considering what we know about his love with the gas pedal, uh, he, he's going to want to throw it down the field in and, 45 seconds. And the thing about it is you trust him. You yes. trust him to make the right decisions out there. So this will be a 40-yarder. Evan Price, sophomore out of the state of Colorado. He's five for six in the regular season. Hit a 45-yarder against UCLA. That is his long of the year. Price nice. serves it up. Yep. And good. He even rhymed. 17-10. Texas the lead. 43 seconds for the Longhorns. Colorado playing in front of a, a, a real crowd for the first time this year by the way they had friends and family in the first, right, first game at Folsom Field and then nothing and this game is we're just happy when there's able to be a crowd in any kind of crowd especially family to be able to see their kids play couldn't even get Mork and Mindy into the stadium for the last couple home games that's lovely you, Boulder that's where you went huh you got to do Popeye right. I can get you a Nanu Nanu you're right Take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup standings. That's a segue brought to you by Progressive. Mountain West 3-0 so far. Uh, if I asked you what the best conference in college football was, would you immediately grab for the SEC or would you say that somewhere else? No, I, I would still go with the SEC. You would. Yeah. yeah. Even with the Mountain West at 3-0. Well, yeah. I, I, you went there. I went, unfortunately, negative. I looked at, uh, at uh, what was the Conference USA 0-6. It's tough. That's a tough call there. 
43 seconds. Texas has one timeout. They will get the ball out of halftime. And this return for Jamison. So they eat up six, seven seconds for a gain of a couple of yards. And here's Sam Ellinger's day so far as a marker has come in late. Oh, I mean, guy was 10 of, 10 of 16 on the day. Early on, this offense was running extremely efficient. As of late, Colorado's defense has been playing pretty well. We saw, we saw what Bijan uh, Robinson did early. Sam being as efficient as he ever is, that's what he does so well. So in a situation... 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. All right, so the ball's going to get backed up. What happens a lot here, Jason, is with little time left, you have a timeout, you run a play and you see how it goes. Because yep. remember, they're getting the ball in the second half. So... It, it's not they don't have to rush down and try and do this so you'll see what the first play brings you if it gets you a decent amount of yards then maybe you'll think about going into a hurry up offense if you get stuff then you probably think about running the clock out saw their expertise in the one minute offense so far so we'll see how they test the waters on this first play as they'll go motion on first down for ellinger and it will be a run for Roshan Johnson, and that might be the end of the line for the first half. Yeah, I think they're going to they're going to call it a half, and I think obviously a lot doing to that when they get the ball in the second half. So they'll they'll be happy with their 17-10 lead going into the going into halftime. They being everybody, or they being everybody but the quarterback. Uh, I'm sure. Listen, we know <laughs> Sam would love to be out there That's still right. running plays without question. But this, this is the smart thing to do right now. And so we hit halftime in the Valero Alamo Bowl with Texas holding a 17-10 lead, and Ellinger runs off for what could be his final halftime as a Texas Longhorn. Into the studio for the very humble. From San Antonio, extremely competitive game so far. Bevo's Longhorns up 17-10. No Ralphie here today. We still have to get your Ralphie story at some point yes, during the telecast. Will. Mike Golick Sr., Jason Benetti, Chris Button on the sideline. Texas jumped out to an early lead in this game. Colorado has come back. Yeah, Sam Ellinger did what Sam Ellinger does. He leads an efficient offense. They outgain Colorado 180 to 68 in the first quarter, jump out to a 14-0 lead. Bijan Johnson was doing what he does in, in Robinson, I'm sorry, in gaining his yards. But they were very efficient. He thought, uh-oh, they're going to they're gonna kind of blow their doors off here. The Colorado defense got very, very uh, uh, tight, and, and they really started to force Texas to, to start to punt, gave their offense a chance, but under Sam Norrell wasn't doing a lot. But under Brendan uh, Lewis, it was. And then that leads us to our clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. And the delivery was the drive he had, the only touchdown drive Colorado had. A great post uh, pass there by Lewis and the great run. Great run by Broussard to get into the end zone. So again, that's their only touchdown that they got. They got a field goal after that to make it a one-score game. You'll wonder how much we'll, we'll see Lewis in the second half as well. We'll find out in a moment after this kickoff goes to Jamison from inside the 10. His return to the 22 and for that to Chris on the sideline. Well, Golik has questions and I have answers for you. Sam Neuer is going to start the second half, but we might not be done seeing Brendan Lewis. Coach Durrell told me he liked the spark that he gave them in the first half, but what that did was it allowed Neuer to sit back, take a sigh of relief, watch, and then he liked what he went back in and win that two-minute drive. He said, I'd like to get Lewis a couple more drives, though, especially in his home state of Texas. Uh, Chris, very poised, go. by the way, with the mascot behind you. Well done. <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Twice tried to photobomb you. She you weren't pro. having. No, She's she wasn't pro. having any of it. From the 21, Sam Ellinger. A new quarterback comes in, I should say. Casey Thompson is in to play quarterback <laughs> oh, for boy. the Texas Longhorns. And there goes B. John Robinson. It is Robinson inside the 30-yard line. And Robinson out of bounds inside the 15. So Ellinger out, Thompson in. Robinson does the damage. You will look at Makai Blackman and Darian Rakestraw, number 25 and 3. They just basically stopped. They, they kind of thought the play was going to be over. They thought Robinson was getting tackled. And he wasn't. And as another huge run, they're starting out this quarter like they started out the game. So Ellinger out. Thompson will throw, and wow. Thompson's got a touchdown. His eighth throw of the year, his third touchdown of the year, and it goes to Moore. 
Nothing fancy, just an easy play action pass to try and pull up the linebackers to give you some space over the top. And he absolutely just fires a rope. What a great job. Nice and high and inside. Defenders behind the receiver. That was about as easy a pitch a catch as you're going to see. Wow, the first drive when they got the ball, I believe it was four or five plays for a touchdown. This one just two. Well, as a Texas fan, you just plan for Sam Ellinger to be the quarterback. That's what you've seen yeah. for 42 starts worth now, 43 tonight. And Thompson comes out of the we'll locker room. False start, number 99, offense, five-yard penalty. It's still a try. Well, I mean, you said it. He's thrown seven passes this year and run the ball four times. So <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of expectation no. to be seeing him out here. And there he was. A red shirt a couple of years ago. He got three runs in the Alamo Bowl last year. Casey Thompson did for a gain of seven total yards. And the extra point for Dicker will get moved back. And it is good. 24-10 Texas for an update on Sam Ellinger. Here's Chris. Well, official word from Texas is that Sam Ellinger is out the rest of the game with a shoulder injury, Jason. How about that? Chris, thank you very much. That is awful news for Sam Ellinger, Texas Longhorns. It, again, this very well could be his final game yeah. as a collegiate football player. It's up to him. There's his mom and his family, and we heard from mom earlier, Jenna. And look, uh, he's got a decision to he make. Does. He does, he, and, and he'll talk to people, you know, obviously. And he is a player. What what draft eligible players can do is they can they can give their name to the league and they can get back a grade on where they think they're going to be told that they may be drafted. And as I mentioned, from our Todd McShay, he's the 12th ranked quarterback. That's not going to make you a high pick at all, if drafted at all. So there are decisions to be made. You know, he's had an unbelievably successful career here at Texas, but going to the next level, we're going to have to wait and see. Is it going to go this year or next year? Colorado will have it from the 20-yard line with the return from Maurice Bell. And Sam Neuer for Colorado will come back out. We would imagine we'll see Lewis, as Chris mentioned, as well. And we'll see who does break the huddle as Neuer is out there. So, look, first half for Sam Neuer. Five for 17, 76 yards. What did you see thematically in his first half? Well, I mean, he was just off on his throws. I mean, now he did have one blocked in, in, in an interception, a knockdown, uh, a drop. But... For the most part, his throws, unfortunately, for him were off. See if he settles that down as Neuer will throw on the roll. He's got Stanley on the catch across the 20. He broke one tackle, and he's just short of the 30-yard line as a marker comes in as well as he got by Chris Adamora, and we'll check the flag. Now we're going to add 15 to this on a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number six. Correction, number one, defense. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run, first down. So to your point, you know, let's see if he settles down. These are good passes to do it, little drags. You know, open receiver, just a two- or three-yard pass. Let then the ball carrier do the rest. He certainly has the ability to throw it downfield. We know that, but, you know, it hasn't been very consistent yet tonight. Neuer came into this game 58%. Six touchdowns, five interceptions. Effective runner at points with five touchdowns over the course of his season. And he's got Broussard behind him. Off play action for Neuer. And he goes the short way. There is Broussard out of the backfield, as you mentioned. And he's right near the line to gain. So again, now we, we go and look to the defensive side. Four-man rush, no pressure. He's got time, three routes to his right. Short route, middle route, and a long route. And they had time, he had time to let it all develop and ends up going with the short route, but certainly a nice game. That does move the chains into Texas territory. Colorado from the 47. It's a rematch of the Big 12 title game from 05. Neuer Got goes him. for the deep ball, oh, wide open, a no. flag down. It was Maurice Bell who could have run all the way to Corpus Christi with the ball in his hand. We'll check the flag. So that's two overthrows, but that was a hold. That was number nine, defense. The foul occurred against an eligible receiver beyond the neutral zone. Ten-yard penalty and automatic first down. So here's what you do. You get fooled, fooled on the move. So what you do is you grab and say, I'm getting beat. 
I'm getting beat. You saw his left hand out there. He knew he was getting beat. Grab a hold. You know, listen, give up 10 yards, don't give up a touchdown. We've seen a face mask that didn't lead to a tackle on this drive. We saw right. a hold that nearly led to a touchdown. Now we're going to see some running. Yes, we are. Broussard shimmies to the outside, and Overshone meets him there. He has played very well so far today. And Broussard, a guy's averaging over six yards a carry, averaged under four tonight. 17 carries for just 57 yards. He, we saw him break a couple ones early, and, and that's the thing about him with his speed. If he breaks it and gets in that open field, he can be gone. But he hasn't been able to get the outside. Texas has done a great job covering the edges. No gain on first down. Second down run. It's Neuer climbing the pocket. He got oh, drilled boy. off the slide. There's got to be a marker there. Overshone went into him, and a flag comes in, and maybe some consternation on well, the Colorado sideline. You know who else was in on that was Jawan Mitchell. Jawan Mitchell was playing in the second half. Personal foul, targeting, number zero, defense. Plays under further review. So the targeting is, is DeMarvian Overshone. But as I mentioned, Jawan Mitchell was in there as well. Mitchell is now playing in the second half because he was suspended for the first half for a targeting in the last game. So we have. So there. Oh, there's Overshone going in, going in low. Now, boy, he does drop his head. We have our rules expert Bill Lamagne with us. Bill, what are you seeing on the targeting possibility here? First of all, he's a defenseless player because he went into a slide. Right. So both rules, 913 and right. 914, will apply. You hit him in the head neck area with forcible contact, which does occur. But he did he did start to dip the head, but he turned the shoulder. Now, so now, this targeting I see for being a defenseless player. Exactly. So so explain that difference. If it's a defenseless player, it doesn't have to be helmet to helmet. No. Any part of the defender that hits the offensive player you, in the head is targeting. If correct? you use your helmet, you use your shoulder, you use a forearm, forcible contact on a defenseless player. That will be targeting. So, so we, we think this targeting is going to stay. I confirm this. Yeah. If he, if he, so he was a defenseless player, so any part of the defender that hits him in the head, it's going to be targeting. That's correct. The, the dive is the indicator for targeting, right? The, the launch, essentially? Yes. Yeah, so you do need an indicator. And yeah. him diving into it, into the player, that's the indicator yeah. there. I mean, just lower. Now, he got, went in. He tried to go in. He saw the head go down, but... He did kind of turn and catch him more with the shoulder. But again, on a defenseless player, that doesn't matter. If you catch that offensive player in the head, it's going to get called because he's in a defenseless position. I mean, three monster penalties oh. on Texas, right? The face mask, 15 yards, a 10-yard hold, and now... This will be 15 yard, and, and I believe Overshone's night is going to be over. If five tackles and an interception is what you're losing for Overshone, if he does have to leave the ball game. And, but, Bill, this is why that rule was put into place, right? I mean, this is the type of play that you have the slide for and targeting. You know, I was surprised the announcement didn't include for the, the late hit right. part yep. of it yep. for the slide. Because he was sliding, right? Because if the targeting penalty goes away, and they haven't called a late hit. Then everything. Then goes there's away. No, penalty no penalty whatsoever. Right. But if you call the late hit and the targeting, and the targeting goes away, the late hit stays. But we have we both have a feeling. I think we all agree that this one's probably going to stay. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you both. Uh, this is targeting to a T here, unless you say. The contact wasn't to the head or neck. I mean, yeah. does the uh, how much does the initial it, it, contact? It, it almost seems like. The back of his shoulder catches him in the that, head. That's one of the other things, you know, when it's not your initial contact point. Right. If right. you initiate contact to the head neck area. So I could start here in the chest, but if I continue up to the head, that's a targeting call. It's taken a while. What does that mean to you? Well, it's taken a while because they're looking at it for some of the same things we've discussed. And if they feel that contact wasn't to the head neck After area. After further review, targeting cannot be confirmed. Therefore, there is no foul for targeting. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Third down at the 30-yard line. It's got to be the contact location, right? Well, they feel that there wasn't forcible contact to the head neck area. And the other thing just came into play. They didn't call a personal foul for a late hit, so nothing Everything happens goes now. away. Everything goes away, and it's now third and three. But, but Bill, you can't, you can't have a kid slide like this and there be no penalty. 
right? But it requires, by rule, it requires that there had to be an announcement. Right. No, right, but I'm saying right. that flag should have come. Right? I, I agree that this, it was two fouls in one. They will run it on third down. I just want to clean that up. There's a reason we allow for the slide, and we don't allow people to get hit after the slide. Correct. Once you've committed to the feet first slide, it's just like you right. stepped out of bounds. I, I'm surprised that there wasn't yeah. a 15 yarder for that. Yeah. Hey, for the sake of the young man, uh, uh, DeMarvin Overshone, I'm glad he's still in the game. I mean, you know, because yeah. personally, and I've said this many times, I'm not a fan of, of guys getting tossed from the game. Yeah. I, I think maybe maybe two times and you get tossed, but I have, I have never been a fan of somebody getting tossed out of the game. What we're left with here, Mike, is fourth down and one, and Colorado is going to ask for a measurement. And so the sticks will come over. We'll see how close this is. Oh, I think they're going for it either way. Right? Yes. Wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's very that close. close. And, and we've seen on these plays, we, we've seen them give the ball to, to Broussard up the middle. You know, the 185-pounder yep. going right between the tackles. So... Because, and I tell you, that might be the way to go because we have seen outside of that really good touchdown run Broussard had, even though when he had that run, Texas defensed it really well. They have defensed the outside very well. And Colorado, typically, about half of their run plays this year have been middle of the field run plays. They are a lean guard center guard run team. So we'll see. Fourth down and one. Broussard is a tailback. Texas's fans. Get loud in San Antonio. Uh, this is either going to be a quarterback sneak if he's going under center or a handoff. Moving at the there. line. Neuer tries to truck forward, yeah, he and he's got, got the first down. Yeah. yeah, when you see that quarterback in a, in a fourth and short go underneath and have the one leg back, it, when they don't have that even stance, when they have a leg back, that's going to be their push-off leg. So look at, look at his feet. Look at how they're staggered. You see that the, the right leg is back there. That's the push off, and that means that they're going to give it a shot to try and go forward. Are you seeing that as a defensive lineman? Oh yeah, definitely are. You saw you saw Texas shift uh, over a bit on that, but yeah, you definitely you should be. I, yeah. I would hope you yeah. would be. So now two for two on fourth down for the Buffaloes. Neuer keeps the drive going, sends it the other way and incomplete into the end zone. He wanted KD Nixon. And it's second down. Sean Jamison, boy, I'll tell you what, he he made an incredible break on that ball. I thought he might have gotten the pick. He broke underneath the receiver. That was an excellent break. We have seen some on both sides some pretty good outside coverages. Again, in an era when it might be the most difficult in yeah. football history to play defensive back. That was an excellent play. Second down for Broussard, trying to get to the outside, and he is stopped. Keandre Coburn, the big sophomore who says he wants to be a leader now, he's pumped. Keandre Coburn, we talked to him last night, and, and we said, hey, we, we had heard when you first showed up to camp you were over 360, and he took a little offense to that. He did, he so stepped no, back a little bit. 342. <laughs> to said, the pound. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you guys know to the pound yeah. oh, what absolutely. you are. He's a large human being right in the middle there. One of eight kids in his family on a third down for Neuer. He feels the pressure. Neuer sends it the other way, and this is caught by Nixon. Another choice to make for Carl Durrell in a 14-point game. This one's a little farther. It's fourth and two. But again, you know, you're down a couple of scores. Mm. I'm going to send the field goal unit in here and get come away with something. Now, now it's an interesting call because Ellinger not being in the game probably affects your decision here. You know, it's a good point. You know, and you're you may get more shots. Your your defense had been playing pretty stout, the from you know the first quarter on, albeit for this first drive in the second half it didn't look too good. But we've seen them settle in in the first half. Maybe they'll do it again here. So this is one where they just want to get some points. Evan Price and he didn't missed it wide. Oh boy, that one Carl Durrell may want back by the end of the night in lovely San Antonio in the shadow of the Riverwalk. This one hurts for any kicker. Evan Price, he, he knew it.
Texas leading, but Sam Ellinger is out of the ball game with a shoulder injury, and Mom Jenna is uh, getting up to go, maybe check on Sam or to walk to the concourse here. But at this point, Texas has the lead. We're going to see the backup quarterback, Thompson, here in the final 25 minutes of this ball game. And Casey Thompson brought him to a touchdown on his opening drive. But again, Casey Thompson, a sophomore at a Newcastle High School in Oklahoma City, in for Ellinger, who, as Chris Button reported, is out with a shoulder injury and done for the day for Texas. Bijan Robinson on a loss on first down. Here are the plays as yeah, we see a flag. A here. nice play there, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Janaz Jordan grabbed the face mask there. So that's going to be what would have been a nice first down stop for Colorado is going to cost them 15. Personal foul, face mask number 94 defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. All right, so let's go look at Sam Ellinger now. He didn't take many hits, so let's look at the couple where he did go to the ground. These were back-to-back -back plays when he was scrambling, didn't throw the ball away, got pushed out of bounds, didn't get hit, but, but put his arms out to land on. And then the next play, he did take a hit right there. Again, he didn't take many hits in the game. We're not sure when he hurt the shoulder. We're just trying to look at some of the plays where he took a hit or hit the ground. But well, he's kind of holding the kinda, arm funny yeah, there yeah. already, he, right? Yeah, exactly. So off the personal foul, Thompson will throw on first deep. down. He uncorks a deep ball down the middle and incomplete. It'll be second down, the coverage from Makai Blackman. So Black Casey, Black Casey Black Thompson, again. I was going to say, yeah. he, was, he was in the Alamo Bowl very briefly last year, ran a couple of times. He redshirted 2018. His father, Charles, was a quarterback at Oklahoma. He's got some history at the quarterback position and a huge chance for him here, Mike. Well, exactly. And maybe a guy that was ready to take the reins, but now you have to wait for a, and I'm not saying now because of the shoulder injury, we talked about it before the game, waiting for Sam. What decision will Sam Ellinger make for next year? And how does the shoulder situation, depending on the severity of it, affect that decision-making process too? And this to the outside from Thompson. He has Joshua Moore to set up third down. Yeah, as far as this game is concerned, I mean, you, you don't even take a chance. You, no, yeah. You're done, you know. Right. You're just taking you off the field, take care of this thing, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Third down for Thompson. He feels the pressure, skids away from it, and finds the tight end, Cade Brewer. That was some nifty footwork right there, a little soft shoe. You would know this kid's a backup, would you? I mean, look at this. The little juke there to buy him a little more time. And look at him just lay the ball up. There's two defenders in the way. He not only has to put it on the mark, but he has to drop it over the defenders as well. Thompson, he wants to go deep. He's got confidence building. You can see it in his body language and now he's going to tuck it and skate out of bounds and lose a yard <laughs> they're going for some shots yeah they are. He already threw a long one that there were two go routes there a stop and go he was trying to get the defender to bite but those outside defenders have been playing well for colorado he's coming in firing the ball i would have thought backup quarterback he would come in and hand the ball off more here's ellinger already out of his out of his uh, equipment Going back, he has his arm in a sling, as you can know. You can't see it, but you obviously see his arm isn't in the, the sleeve of the jacket. So and it is his right shoulder. It is a throwing shoulder. That is awful to see yes, for Sam is. Ellinger, one of the most competitive people you're ever going to talk to at the quarterback position. As he walks off, Thompson in the ball game. The sophomore, his <laughs> understudy, lets it rip again. Contact and a one-handed yeah. opportunity. Flags come in from everywhere, from west of Texas, from north of Texas, yeah. and east as well. I, I mean, they are just coming in with this kid, and just he's just humming the ball. And this, this, was, this was a guy getting beat, as again, we're looking at... 50-yard penalty. Walking out. Sam coming back out onto the field, it looks like, but we, we've been talking a lot about Blackman and how well he's been playing. This time he just flat out got beat. He got beat and, and he just said, okay, I'm going to hang on. And he hung on that right hand down by the, at the hip of the jersey, just hung on to try and pull the receiver to him. It's a good call. He had the torso. He had the jersey. Yeah, he, did. he had his wallet. I mean, the whole thing. It's one of those. He, he got beat and he wasn't going to be able to make it up. So he said, I got to try and slow him down. That's the right play, certainly. 
Roshan Johnson, the tailback for Thompson to the 30-yard line, looking for a second scoring drive in short action so far. Thompson again down the middle. That is on target, and it is a touchdown. Joshua Moore, that was in the center of the bullseye. I, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with a backup quarterback coming in and Mike Yersich just saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to heave the ball. We're going to continue to throw it. Where you think they would run the ball, burn some clock, they're coming out and not just throwing, I mean dealing. And this kid is putting them on the mark. He is absolutely putting them on the mark. That is up where only his receiver yeah. can get it. It wasn't awful coverage by Blackman at all. We're going to take a look and see if that is a catch completed for a touchdown. So we've gotten a couple looks at it. They're going to take a look at it on replay, being a scoring play. So again, the ball was up nice and high. The defender did have his left hand up in there. So let's see how it comes down. We'll all take a look at it together. After we get another glance at it, we'll check in with our rules expert, Phil Lamagne, and watch the replay here. Blackman gets the arm in, as you were talking about. And the question is, does he complete the catch as he's going to the ground. Bill, as you're watching this replay as an official, what are you looking at? Well, first of all, when they're, when players are turning over like that, you have no view of the ball. Right. Yep. So you're looking for this initial control, which he has. He comes down. Now at this point here, does he survive going to the ground? Oh, is that ball, is that ball enough on the ground right there? But the ball can be touching the ground right. and control. control. Exactly and still be a catch so, so so if you see something like that now you have to determine okay the ball is touching the ground now you have to determine does he have control of it if he's got firm control when it's touching the ground he's still got the ball so so uh, tell me what you're looking at if you're a replay official to see firm control what defines that for you well two hands is better than one obviously yeah. uh and he appears to have two here now as he rolls over i'm looking to see does a hand come off the ball does the ball move through that hand if it's coming off here's the view here's the view where you actually see the ball on the ground touchdown touchdown, Stance. 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 touchdown. i think that that's the right call we have nothing there that yeah. can turn that call over i meant to say it earlier you did. It was a touchdown. It stands, yeah. Yep. You got You got it. Mm. We're there. Partial credit. We're there together. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating the camaraderie of getting to a result as a group. Oh, stop. Mike, it's, it's, it's 2020's mantra. <laughs> Other than please go away. Extra point is good, and it's 31-10 Texas. Casey Thompson has come into the ball game and flexed with Joshua Moore. Hi, this kid, man. Who knows where this game's gonna go? There is where you wanna go. It's what you wanna do. And how you wanna feel. There is what you miss. And what you need. There is a plan taking shape. Filling you with excitement. There is here. Let's go there, San Antonio. Plan your trip at visitsanantonio.com. Hey, Jake from State Farm. Thanks again for the Rogers rate on my insurance. There's no Rogers rate. State Farm just has surprisingly great rates. I won't tell anybody, okay? When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This world is bigger than all of us. Now playing in theaters and streaming exclusively on HBO Max. Ready PG-13.
The Valero Alamo Bowl is fueled by Valero. Texas unbeaten in bowl games with Tom Herman as the head coach and Sam Ellinger as the starting quarterback. There's a smile after beating Utah at the Valero Alamo Bowl last year. And there is his understudy, Casey Thompson, talking to the injured center, Derek Kerstetter. And how about this revelation? Casey Thompson, the sophomore off the bench, they're not afraid at all to let him rip it. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, it caught me by surprise. I thought they would get back to the running game a little more and try and reestablish that. And he came out throwing, and, and, and as I said, not short passes, not kind of getting the groove yeah. passes, but going long. Really, really impressive. There's a, there's, what a great sign right there. Thanks for the memories. And again, we still have to wait and see. Yep. You know, are the memories over? We might have a double goodbye. Yeah. We, you know, people think this might be his last game. We'll see how the shoulder injury affects his decision making as well. Again, everybody's got an opportunity for an extra year of eligibility as Bell gets dropped on great coverage from Texas. And we go downstairs to Chris Button. Yeah, Jason, Sam Ellinger has always been one to just put his body on the line for his team. These are his injuries he sustained just this season. A calf contusion against Baylor, a quad contusion against Texas Tech, soreness in his left hand, torso injuries from all the hits that he's taken. I covered him a couple weeks ago against Iowa State. He said he can't even remember what 100% health feels like because of just how much his body has endured all year. Well, we'll get into the conversation we have with him and something that whenever he gets to the next level is going to have to change some. No air hit yeah. and second down on the way. Yeah, no, no patience on that one. He did it a little too quickly and the hole closed up on him. But for Sam, I mean... I said, you know, are you working on getting down, sliding? And he said, I'm working on it, to which, you know, Chris finally asked him, or, or you, I forget which one I asked, well, if you're still working on it, it's been four years, are you right. really working on it? Are you actually, and he said, thank you for calling me out on that. Yeah, because that, that stuff, unfortunately for him, is, won't fly well at the next level. You have to, again, he's going to have to get down a lot more because he wants to make plays, and I get it, I understand that, but it could really cost you. Now Neuer trying to respond for Colorado, and you see the energy on the Texas sideline. This is a big moment for Colorado, third down and 12, down 21, to stay in contact. Yeah, it really is, and, and, and Neuer is, is really struggling throwing the ball. I'm, I'm not going to be surprised at all if we see Brendan Lewis again in this game, maybe in the next series or so. Uh, Neuer is just, just a little too inconsistent with the accuracy right now. Carl Durrell, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year. Colorado with a marvelous season after low expectations nationally they have played out of their minds this season as Neuer misses and it will be fourth down for Colorado three and outs at yeah, that time Texas brought a little heat one blitzer and a late blitzer just to just to let him know they were there he gets rid of the ball and just an underthrow so again I I, I I would be surprised if we didn't see Lewis at least by this next yeah. series yeah Especially considering there's a chance Lewis could be your quarterback next year. Exactly. There's a chance. Right. Low snap. Jamison back to receive from the 40. Wants to give it a go, and he is dropped right at the 40-yard line. Casey Thompson into the ball game, and he's been a revelation. Really impressive what he's done. No fear at all. Back in the pocket and just rifling the ball. Putting him in great spots. That move there to buy himself a little more time. And then the angle of that throw. I can't tell you how impressive that was. But where he puts the ball is as important as anything else. There's one thing to have a completion. There's another thing to put your wide receiver in the best spot uh, uh, available. And that's what he's doing. He's giving his wide receivers the best chance to get the ball. And he's doing it with confidence. You see the decisive throws as he is ready for a third drive for the Texas Longhorns. They will run, and they'll do it with Bijan Robinson, who we were asking him what drew him to football. And I've never heard anybody say this. He said, I like the shape of the football. Yeah. I just like the feel of the football in my hands. Hadn't heard that one. Right? Yeah. 
There's a new one. He said there's a, the, a picture of him getting his first haircut. He's holding a football, and he's going to do it for a long time. Thompson on the run right down the zipper. Thompson galloping through the Texas night for a first down. And th this was a play the whole way. You saw him do the hitch like he was going to throw, but already linemen were running downfield. So when you see linemen already running downfield, that is a quarterback draw because they can't be down there for quarterbacks in the throw. If that was a setup the entire way, great play call. B. John Robinson oh, pinballs boy. off a defender, shakes another one, says, get out of here, first down. This is starting to roll up on Colorado right now. This is nothing fancy. Straight up the gut, bounces off one. You can't arm tackle this guy. And then he's got the moves as well. Thompson behind Robinson, who's blocking for him. I'm so glad you asked him what he enjoys more, catching a wheel route for a touchdown yeah. or dipping the shoulder. Because you can see the shoulder thing he loves. He absolutely like I did. I, I said to him, I said, dip in that shoulder or, yeah, catching the ball more out of the backfield, and he loves to drop it. 220 pounds. But he does it with a smile. He's a smiling assassin. Yeah, remember, he flipped the switch out there. He does he flips the switch. And he's got a nice little move. It's, it's not over-exaggerated. just a, a nice move. And what it does, it puts the defender in a position to have to arm tackle. Yeah. And he is so good at running through arm tackles. How hard is it to arm tackle him, do you think? You're seeing the results right out there. You Extremely want to try post-COVID? No, that's why, why. I'll tell you why it was easier for me. Thompson, throw back the other direction, Roshan Johnson, third down. Why was it easy? Whenever we played a big back, and going back in the day, people, you may have to Google them, when I played against a guy like Christian Okoye, yeah. a monster-sized back, well, when you're a D lineman, you're not getting them at full speed. You know, if you get them, they're, they're starting three yards or back or so, three or four yards back, you're getting them before they've built up that full speed. It's the backers or the, the defensive backs that get, that get these heavy or big backs downfield when they haven't been touched as a D lineman it's, it's not as bad and by the way for our younger audience go watch Christian Okoye in oh. the Chiefs days yeah. on YouTube yep. that guy yep. was a train that's a hammer right there my gosh third down and seven for Thompson to throw Thompson sidesteps Thompson got lost in it and got drilled he gets sacked he took his eyes away and Carson Wells got in there for the sack the valedictorian of his high school class good eventual rush but that's more covered sack and that's more on where you get a young quarterback not a lot of time just that internal clock needs to go off a little sooner to get rid of the ball you know certainly that that's a that's a young inexperienced quarterback mistake Carson Wells by the way we mentioned the valedictorian of his high school class we asked who he beat out. He said, my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Emily Huff, second place. They're still together. They're still though. together. A true American love story. That is amazing. Field goal spins through for Dicker, and it is 34 to nothing. A 35-yard field goal. Texas building on maybe a fourth bowl win for Sam Ellinger involved. Bolt, you will be there. Yes, I will. Mike Golick Sr. And then Texas A&M and Kellen Mond against North Carolina Capital One Orange Bowl at Hard Rock Stadium. What's your Oregon-Iowa State preview for Well, us? I'll tell you what, what. What Oregon did to get that chance in the Pac-12 championship and take the win. And in a year like this, man, you're, you're the champs. You know, great job out of you. Put yourself in that position. Iowa State, I've done them a couple times this year. They've gotten better as the season's gone on. But Oklahoma did a great job on them in the Big 12 championship game. I know there was a lot of disappointment there. We'll see who comes out for Colorado at quarterback. It is going to be Lewis, yeah. the freshman. Quick note on your game, though. It's, uh, there are not many smarter coaches to me than Matt Campbell and what he's done in Ames. On it a Mount Union, I mean, it's incredible what he has done. Uh, the winning that has gone on, uh, that class of seniors there is the winningest class there. I mean, and what Brock Purdy has done, he's beaten every Big, t Big 12 opponent. So, yeah, what he is building there, and you know what happens then? You build, and all of a sudden, other people come knocking That's on right. your door. But uh, he, they, they love him there. He loves being there right now, and uh, he has done a great job. So, former Big 12 rivalry here, Colorado and Texas. This is still a three-score game. It would take a massive comeback, but we have seen it before involving Oregon and TCU in this game. There, there have been some major comebacks. Yeah, that, that certainly was a major comeback. What, Oregon was up, what, 31 nothing at half in that game? Yeah. And then they, that TCU beats them three overtimes, 47-41. Wow. 
a wild game they still play at the TCU facility every once and again if you go there for basketball as this is on the mark for Stanley Lewis once again hits his target it's a first down into Texas territory yeah you know, I like that play a lot I like it they, they roll out Lewis give him a little bit of space now it does cut off half the field I understand that but you you run routes at different levels and you have a wide open receiver there in Stanley uh, handoff for Broussard and yeah Colorado is trailing by 24 but do not underrate what Jarek Broussard has gone through he's a sophomore tailback he got the opportunity with the injury to Fontenot who was great last year for the Buffaloes and you've mentioned it a couple of times but if you're just joining us this is a kid who's had two torn ACLs and and you know injuries in football it's yeah. not easy you disappear you to everybody and not only that but you you disappear there and you start to drop on the on the uh, the depth chart as we see another quarterback run here, Lewis. Once again, again got a room. Lewis down the sideline. Lewis is knocked out of bounds at the two yard line. First down and goal. Foster finally tracked him down after a 43 yard jaunt. Well, you heard, you know, when Tom Herman was talking to our Chris Button down on the sideline at halftime, he mentioned, he talked about Lewis and the fact that, okay, hey, this guy is a runner. We have got to be able to contain him. And, and they certainly didn't do it there. Broussard has the lone touchdown for Colorado today. Broussard has the second touchdown for the Buffaloes today. So we've seen Lewis come in in the first half, lead him to a touchdown drive, and now we've seen him come in again and lead to another touchdown drive on big plays. The first touchdown drive he had, the deep corner route that he threw and completed, which was a beautiful throw, and here a big run that he takes care of himself. And I like they switched up the play call a little bit with getting him on the move. I think he feels a little more comfortable that way. They're going for two here to try and make it a two-score game. You still have a quarter plus remaining, and you're dealing with Texas's backup quarterback, albeit <laughs> one that doesn't look like a backup <laughs> quarterback at all. Sure doesn't. It's got that Kurt Warner, Trent Green feel to it at this point right now for Thompson playing very well. Lewis loads a time. I mean a ton of time. To the sideline, he's got to throw it, and he whips it out of bounds. Incomplete off the V in Valero. So it's 18, but it was the running game it was. that got him there. Yeah, the running game and a rollout pass. So switching some things up a little bit. There you see the run. Good job on that old line. Good blocking downfield. He doesn't get touched until he's all the way to the five-yard line, two-yard line. Good combo block. Combo block to find that for combo us. Combo block, a, a right guard, right tackle. Both guys are, are hitting the D lineman, and one goes off to the linebacker to the second level, and they kind of form a little bit of a wall there that Prasar just cuts back on. What's your least favorite thing offensive lineman did to you? Well, I, you know, the, the, the combo block is tough because you're actually getting double team. So it starts out like if I'm playing over a guard, and the guard hits me and then the tackle hits me and then what happens is the guard if the play is going to my right the guard wants to get through to the linebacker i need to hold on to him but i got two guys hitting me so you got to be stout in there and and hold on and hold your ground so that your line either your linebacker can be free or when the lineman leaves you you're able to make the tackle i would say let's do a demonstration but that wouldn't be COVID safe thank goodness for me uh, the return here for Jamison. He's across the 20 to the 25 yard line. Hey, the college football playoff championship is on the way. On Friday, the main telecast for the CFP semifinals starts at 4 Eastern. Also, an assortment of different feeds for those two games. Command Center, Skycast. You'll feel like you're flying over the ball game. Spanish language, the national radio broadcast, some hometown radio as well, and uh, some really good stuff in the mega cast. I'm going to be calling the game from my couch in Arizona. You will. Before the festival. Yep, I will. Uh... I'll be doing full analyst work there. You will will there be a microphone, no. or will you just be yelling no. across the living room? It'll be my wife will be there, and then she'll eventually leave. That, that sounds like a wonderful holiday, yeah. holiday season for the Golics. <laughs> That's great. Casey Thompson has been near perfect so far. He's 5 for 6, 64 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And the big, burly freshman, Bijan Robinson, takes two to knock out of bounds. I didn't think he was going to get the corner and then did. 
And this, this is what I thought they'd be doing more of the running. And Casey Thompson just comes out throwing the ball. Well, for B. John Robinson, there you see Clemson, Ohio State, two against three, Alabama and Notre Dame. For B. John Robinson, he got the comparison from Ricky Williams, who called him Little Ricky. I mean, that's, yeah. you talk about anointing that's somebody. Pretty nice. That guy was a legend. Robinson again, they will reverse it. Thompson lays out a little bit of a block and Whittington down the sideline. That's a first down run. You don't have oh. to engage, you just have to get in the way and we do have a marker coming in. Wow, that play worked so well. Thompson, a nice job. He said it can't come back toward the line of scrimmage and make that hit. So you do the wall off block, which is perfectly legal. So let's see what the flag is. That looked like a high ball screen in basketball. Yeah, that's exactly right. Illegal block below the way. It's number 21 defense. Oh. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. So we have our rules analyst Bill Lamagne along with us. And you hear block below the waist against the defense. And that might be a little quizzical for the audience. What are they looking here? Well, the defense has restrictions about blocking below the waist just like the offense. And the only time they're able to do it is right at the line of scrimmage against eligible receivers. You do it here in that situation, that far downfield, that's a foul. Right, you can do it if, if a trapper's coming out and it's on the line and you come in and want to blow it up, you can go down low. That's correct. But down the field, like he did there with a, with a big lineman in front of him, he took the safer and route he, to try and, and make the foul. he wasn't going for the tackle no. where he inadvertently exactly. hit somebody. Right. right. And while we're talking, we'll get another flag for what seems to be offside. So that's Jordan offside there. I mean, it's just... It's falling apart a bit Offside, right now. Offside, number 94 defense contact before the snap. Five-yard penalty, still first down. We saw the first quarter go heavily in Texas's favor, and then the Colorado defense really stepped up. Yep. Now we saw Texas jump out again in the second half, and then maybe we were waiting for the same thing, but the Colorado defense is not doing the same thing in the second half that they did in the second quarter. They held up a lot of the weight in that did. first half yes, and the did. offense has not reciprocated a whole lot to help push it forward here in the second half thanks in large part to a stout texas defense right. playing under man quick throw woodard one more time turns it up field and he's got a first down nice day for woodard the sophomore out of houston Again, this is, this is college ball we talk about. Quick plays like that. Get it to receivers. Let them make plays down the field. See more and more of those outside plays. Three quarters deep. Spirited game so far. 34-16. Texas trying to stay unbeaten in bowls under Tom Herman. 15 minutes to go from San Antonio. Welcome back. It's part of Capital One Bowl Mania. And Casey Thompson has steered the Longhorns in the right direction. 34-16, fourth quarter, here we come. Sam Ellinger out with a shoulder injury. He's been commiserating with Thompson during the break, but Ellinger in the sling, he came off the field, then back on. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what decision he ends up making about whether or not this was his final Texas game. But for now, Colorado needs a stop. And badly. Thompson. Oh, oh nearly wow. intercepted. Gonzalez had it in his mitts and could have turned the game on its side. I was just going to say, if there was a time that they needed a big play, because they need to stop him from even a field goal here. they got to stop the bleeding. And that was another chance. We saw in the first half the possibility of a pick six that wasn't, that wasn't caught. These are these little chances. And when you've been losing the entire game, these are the plays that you have to make. Good coverage and all is great. Finish. It was Blackman on the other side. Yep. Both corners that started for Colorado had a chance at a pick six. Thompson the throwback. He pitches it oh, out wide. And that is going to go for a while. It's a touchdown for Joshua Moore and Texas. Beautiful design by Yursich as B. John Robinson hauls it in and gets in for a Texas touchdown. B. John Robinson, the touchdown for the Longhorns. So watch everything come to the right. Watch the defense go with it. So there's the fake, and there's the roll right. Everybody coming to the right. Now let's freeze it. Look at everybody here come on this side of the field. And all he has is that lane and two guys right there to lead him in. I mean, and again, 
That's what's worked on in the practice field. But you talk about Sam Ellinger and the patience. Well, this is a backup quarterback with not a lot of reps. So, but you rep this in practice, and it's all about giving it time to develop. Mm. And that's what he did. So B. John Robinson has another big play for the Texas Longhorns. Three total touchdowns and a 41-16 lead. concert like 32 songs or something like that wow this building's seen a lot now yeah I've, so, I've been fortunate enough to be here a few times myself it's yep. been beautiful to hang out in this area the river walk i mean it is just it's a fantastic place to be yeah it's a, it's a gorgeous city and it's got that sort of vibe where you want to be outside yep, it's do, tough to right. be here in 2020 yep, exactly doesn't have the same feel but it's a great host city for this bowl game that has thrived uh for years and years as you see sam ellinger over on the sideline at colorado will get it back Trailing by 25 now. The touchback will give him the ball at the 25. So, you know, we're going to get to, to talk about Sam Ellinger and, and what may go on from here. Um, but, you know, with, with Colorado, we, you know, we talked about Sam Neuer and what he's done from being a backup to being a safety to almost transferring to starting this year and being second team all Pac-12. But now, you know, with, with another quarterback out there in Lewis, if Neuer does decide he wants to come back for another year, let me tell you, I think it's going to be a dogfight. Who's going to be the starter, yep. quite honestly? Especially with Lewis getting the time yep. in this game, getting the chance as Lewis will roll, Lewis will throw, and Lewis has a completion at the 30-yard line and turning up field to the 40, and a first down for the Buffaloes, and Lamonius Craig with his first grab. It just seems the offense is just moving a little more efficiently. He's given him a little more options because of his legs. And, and not every offense runs that way, but this one seems to be running smoother in that vein. Oh, ball on the oh, deck. No. Broussard, I believe, They're was down. down. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say Colorado's the side that needs the breaks, not, yeah. <laughs> not Texas. And that would have been brutal. Yeah, the put away would have been coming for Texas at six and three. And again, the Longhorns have had a couple of very close losses. Yep. Three losses, 13 total points this year, including some overtime. As Lewis will throw, he loads it up. Oh, he wants the sideline oh, yeah. and a lot of contact. Yeah. And there it goes. Brendan Rice signaled for it. And the marker comes in. Yeah, that was uh, Jalen, Jalen Green. I mean, he didn't even, it's one of those, no, no I don't think it was Jalen. Um, didn't even look back for the ball. I believe they got 15 yard penalty, Barron. first down. Jade Barron. Yeah, it's exactly what they got. And, and, and again, when you're not going to look back for the ball, that means you have to time your hands going up. But you see, he doesn't look back, and he just grabs. He sees the receiver stopping and starting to go back. So instead of putting a hand up, he grabs around the shoulder pads. And that's that's about the easiest call as you could make. That's true freshman out there, you know, getting a getting an early little lesson. Well, Chris Ash was very excited about his guys getting an opportunity. He said they were fired up and ready to go and really wanted to play. And we've seen that as that one is on target for KD Nixon and a first down Buffaloes. Chris Ash, who spent some time in his summers as a corn detasseler. Never knew what that was until he explained it. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, so you made pretty good money, though, for high school. Yeah, a bunch of thousands yeah. detasseling corn, pulling the tassels off corn. That's your farming tutorial of the night. Nixon catches the flare, and he is out of bounds just short of the line to gain. So Colorado is still pumping for points. There's just a, a better flow to this offense, and, and I, I think I think Brendan Lewis is really helping himself here for next year because I, I, I think it was almost fait complete that Neuer was going to come back. Yeah. Again, being there for a long time, but only starting this year. So Brendan is really showing well here. Broussard will have the first down and then some. And Neuer, I mean, talking to Darren Chivarini as well, they feel like Neuer, Neuer's just figuring out the position. Like, he is growing into that. Right. So the extra year really works perfectly for him. It, it does. And, and that's why if if you can get a normal offseason, can yep. you get spring ball in, I think it'll be a, a, a real heck of a battle here. And I know people may be saying, oh, it's easier to drive now when, you know, you're losing 41 to 10. The defense may be playing back. And, and as we see a short gain up the middle, 
my answer to that was he went in the first half and had a touchdown drive. He came in a little earlier as well when they, if they scored a touchdown, they got a touchdown and tried to go for two points to make it a two-score game. So he was getting these drives while they were still somewhat in the game, not to the lead it is now. And you still got to do it. I mean, you still yeah. have to execute. Regardless, exactly. There are 11 people out there who want to play. Right. But Texas credit Ash and his defense with so many out playing very well tonight as Lewis goes for Stanley in the end zone and that mm, looked like a Dan Gable special. I mean, that's like you get some points for that deal. That's pass interference. Well, that ball again was just underthrown. Pass interference, number 11, defense. It's Anthony Cook. Penalty places the ball at the two-yard line from the previous spot and a first down. So again, you see an underthrown ball, which means a receiver sees it first. So they stop to come back for it. Defender's not looking back. And again, he puts that left arm out. I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think it was awful, in all honesty. Bill Lamagna gave me a thumbs up, and I get, yeah. I get, I feel very accomplished when he does that. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. stick with it. Yeah. First, first and goal <laughs> for Colorado, and this run gets them in. It's a touchdown for Lewis. Neuer celebrates on the sideline, and the Buffaloes, you would imagine, would go for two to draw within 17. Well, so they've had three touchdown drives, and Brendan Lewis has been the leader of all of them. And this is a threat he is. He's been throwing the ball well, as he's six for six. But he's a threat running the ball as well. So, Neuer, very happy for his teammate without question. But in what is it heading for a loss, it looks like for Colorado at this point, Lewis has shown himself well. Extra point is good. Folks are happy about that. 23, the total for Colorado. The quarterback celebrate on the sideline. Buck's trying to come back. Super Bowl yeah. win. It, it starts as a college football trophy and then it becomes yeah. a family thing winning a Super Bowl. I, I love that about college football as you see our Capital One player of the game. It's B. John Robinson and you, you kind of get the feel that he's going to be one of those guys. We're going to show his picture in 15 years and say, remember when he played in this game? Yeah, oh, exactly. And we're going to show his picture as a Longhorn for probably only three years. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's very likely true. 220 total yards, three touchdowns, came into the game with nine plays of over 20 yards. That's a couple more today, both running and receiving. Coming into the game, six runs over 20, three catches over 20. He's got a couple, uh, one or two of each tonight. So he is, uh, he is as advertised. <laughs> And then some. Yeah. I mean, the build, he doesn't, he doesn't look like a freshman. He doesn't run like a freshman as Texas will get it from the 25. Look, he's done it in a bunch of different ways, too. Oh, he, without question. And, and this this is, we see the running back of the NFL now, not just a runner to be able to be fast, to be able to be strong, but catch the ball out of the backfield. It's all about matchups now. And here, these are a couple of screens that worked out, obviously, extremely well. But he's a guy, remember, just a true freshman. And they've, they've made sure to bring in, to have the other guys running the ball as well. They said they didn't want to put too much on his plate. They said there's still something to just kind of steadily feeding him and not making him the feature guy all the time, which he will eventually become here probably next year and get the lion's share of everything. But to become that more all-around back, catching the ball even more out of the backfield. Well, you asked him about catching the ball, and he said, I'll do anything, basically. You, you put it in my hands however you want me to do it. Uh, I'm happy to learn that. And he knows how that might help him as Roshan Johnson tries to sidestep a man and gets a yard. And it was one thing he said, you know, I did a lot of that in high school. They put me out at wide receiver and slot. Well, of course, when you're a man <laughs> amongst boys, we're going to put you everywhere. But now in college, and then you, when you go to the next level, now it's about matchups. Who can we match him up on where we know we're going to get the win and start to be more versatile with him? There are more and more people that you can match him up against, and he's probably going to get the win. He, yeah. He's played very well tonight and had a tremendous freshman season for Texas where they have churned out running backs for years. Thompson again, oh. deep ball, wide open, he dropped it in beautifully. And another absolute strike for a Texas touchdown to Dixon. Wow. Jonathan Van Dees, the linebacker, is the one that got matched up there. And you can't even really say a match. That was a home 
run. What these two backup quarterbacks have been doing is incredible. They're a combined Casey Thompson and Brendan Lewis, 14 for 16 for 265, four touchdowns and no picks. So again, nothing, nothing really fancy here, and yet you still end up wide open. Middleman in the slot, and just, I mean, again, it, it's, it's not a fancy offense. You take off, and you have a backer trying to break out and cover on you as the safety drops, the, 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 the safety drops and lean toward the outside receiver and left your linebacker in a, the unenviable position of covering a wide receiver. So again, tandem routes. Look at the route, the outside rusher, that safety, number 30, leaning that way. Curtis Appleton leaning toward the receiver. Dixon running to the middle, and that's where the linebacker has to run with him. Again, that's you see one man on one man, but there's a reason it ends up that way with the other route and where the safety went. How about Casey Thompson? He had four completions all season. He has four touchdowns tonight in Texas's bowl game. Buffaloes will get it back. From the 25. Downstairs, Chris. Well, Jason, there was a chance that Casey Thompson wasn't even going to be in the burnt orange because after last season, he briefly put his name in the transfer portal, questioning where he was going to end up in the depth chart behind Sam Ellinger. After a couple days and some re-recruitment by Tom Herman, he pulled himself out and decided to stay. And the coaching staff, when you talk to them about Thompson, just raves about his intelligence of the game. Well, they're not afraid to call anything for him, that's for no, sure. No, they're not, and he's not afraid to step in there and, and, and you know, whip it either. Jim. Wow. Buffalo's ball, that defensive oh. line has been awesome for Texas today. Andre Colburn there. Our big man, 6'2", 348 pounder, just eating up the middle there. Maybe see uh, Mr. Coburn in the NFL draft at some point down the line, sophomore out of Houston. I mean, that's just, you know, a, a big guy eating up blocks, and then with the ability to go side to side like he did to make a play like that, holding Broussard again, and it's at three yards a carry. Lewis to throw. Yet another deep ball. We got fireworks tonight. That one incomplete. But back to Coburn for a second. We mentioned he's one of eight kids in the family. And we were talking to him about what his role is. And he said, I want to be the guy to show my brothers and sisters the right way to go. Right. And that, boy, that is such a mature thing to say. Oh, it really is. And for a guy who, at one point, when they were getting ready for the bowl game, looked around on his defense and saw all the leaders, the older guys, upperclassmen, all opting out, getting ready for the NFL, and all of a sudden, he's the guy. You know, he's the guy everybody's looking at. And that one's not going anywhere, so it is going to be fourth down coming up for the Buffaloes, and Overshone, who stayed in the ball game after the targeting was wiped away, made the play, and he's posing for his own fake pictures on the sideline. <laughs> Well, they're, they're all feeling their oats now over on Texas, as well they should, sitting there with 48 points. I mean, they played a heck of a ball game starting out. Well, you know, we've seen the, the scoring by quarters, 14 in the first quarter when you start a game. Then it's always interesting what happens in the beginning of a third quarter with the adjustments you make. They put 17 more up in that quarter, now 14 here so far. Another punt for Colorado and a fair catch is secured but barely by Jamison. 48-23, Casey Thompson is letting it fly, man. He gonna remember this for a long time. Lift him up, Simba Cam. And deep balls galore. Incredible, coming in, just throwing the ball, and, and I mean, really has great command of the offense, and, and again, while he, he's playing great, you look at what Sam Ellinger, one thing the coaches tell us is just how Sam can be a coach in that in that quarterback room. And when the, the, the offensive coordinator, you know, in Mike Yurich would say, you want to learn, just watch yep. how Sam prepares. 
from the practice field to the film room to lifting. Watch him and learn. And now the third quarterback for Texas comes in, Hudson Card, who we saw in the opener very briefly for a couple of runs. He now is on for his first bowl experience, another quarterback out of Austin, and Lake Travis High School. He will run oh, and wow. pitch it wide. Oh, sleight of hand, little magic show for Malcolm Epps on the catch. He has thrown one pass and run the ball twice. So on his fourth play, he's just going down and still throws the ball out there. Wow. How about Card dealing from the bottom of the oh, deck? Oh, come on. Well done. Hudson Card escapes out of bounds. That is beautiful. Look huh? at that. And it was kind of a, a throw. He did it with his right hand. He's kind of threw it out there. Wow. What? <laughs> It's a nice job by Epps staying in, in good discipline range yeah. to, be, to be pitched to. You say, you always stay there because you never know when the pitch is coming. Made himself available. Sure did. So, Lake Travis and Westlake, the two powerhouse high schools who have uh, provided quite a few quarterbacks to the NFL and to college football. Ellinger from Westlake, Hudson Card from Lake Travis, and he turns this direction and throws once again. This is Kai Money, so Card to Money. And suddenly we're in Las Vegas. There you go. It'll well, be third yes. down. And, and, you know, there may be people saying, oh, my gosh, there's eight minutes to go in the game. They're up, you know, 48 to, to 23. Why are you still throwing the ball? Listen, this, this is you run your offense. You know, it's a third string quarterback. You know, you have young guys that are playing. And, and, and Carl Durrell understands that too of Colorado. He, he, he knows you're not just going to hand the ball up the, up the middle. You're going to play ball. You're in a bowl game. Keep playing. You know, let, let everybody get some experience running the normal offense. Tom Herman nearly tackled Dicker. He said, no, 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 no. He ran over and put the hands up at, like he was telling a golf gallery to be quiet. And the kicking team stayed on the sideline. But uh, to, to your point, these guys, uh, you never know when your next football game is going to be. Exactly we learned right. that in 2020. Right. You go play and you have fun while you're on the field. Well, the normal situation in bowls in a normal year is you get about 15 practices, and a lot of those practices are used with young players. Well, that was out the window this year, especially for Texas on defense. Those young players are actually in the two deep now, yep. and they're actually playing for real. So here's the situation. You're playing well in this game. You have a big lead. You can put other players in. You're going to continue to run your offense. And I completely understand it. Like I said, Carl Durrell over at Colorado understands it as well. You keep playing. It's kind of it's kind of like if you if you don't like it, stop them. Right. Right. But that's not even the point. No, Carl no, Durrell's not. not that type of guy. No, that's no. not the feel. But but it does play in baseball as well when you got a 3-0 pitch and somebody's hitting a grand slam when they're up seven to nothing. Yeah, sometimes leads aren't safe yeah. and you want to play the game. You want to have fun yeah. playing the game That's what we all want as sports fans to watch people who enjoy it These are guys that don't get to play a lot now. They do let them let them run the offense I mean you got Sam Ellinger on the sideline who told us he used to race against his brother to see who could take the fastest shower Yeah, so like there's there's a competitive <laughs> level of all of these guys and They want to do everything they can to enjoy the game that they have in front of them. So there you go Step off my soapbox and read this promo. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll have the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Sam Hartman and the fast-paced Wake Forest Demon Deacons on a lovely Winston-Salem against the 3-3 three and three Badgers. Noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on ESPN and the ESPN app. Don't think I didn't know what you did there. Oh, no. The anyway, we're on the, we've, uh, there's, uh, there's Sam's brother, by the way, dressing out for the first yeah. time. Great to see Jake. Uh, in uniform and ready to go. I mean, we saw a pregame that uh, Jenna, mom of right, Sam and right. Jake, pointed at Jake running out onto the field. What a great moment, moment that had to be. Yeah, now unfortunately, it's been a, a bad moment now seeing their son in a sling and Sam. Colorado trailing big and Lewis on the roll. Lewis got hit and spun out of it. Lewis. Still pinballing around, and wow. Lewis finally down at the 16-yard line. A lot of gumption there. You want to talk about everybody holding their breath to all of a sudden, oh, wow, oh, we have two, not one, but unfortunately two Texas players down. And one of them is the outstanding freshman, Alfred Collins. So Collins is down. He is one of the two injured parties. And the second one is Benda, the linebacker. 
So we'll step aside. We'll check on Texas's injured parties after this. The Valero Alamo Bowl with Texas up 48-23. And one thing you do not want to see ever, certainly at the end of the season, going into the offseason, the injuries and two for Texas in this one, in this last play. Alfred Collins and David Benda, both up and off the field, seem to be doing better, but something you just hate to see. As Broussard gets hit, ball came loose, yep. the ball is down, and Texas is pointing the other direction. We'll see who's at the bottom of the pile, and they are gonna fight for it. Looked like one official pointed Colorado's way. No, they're gonna say Texas football. Texas comes up with it. And it's Longhorn football, and Broussard is hurt, and yep. he is frustrated. Goodness gracious. Yeah, he got, listen, he got hit hard right in the middle there, and they've been trying that. They couldn't get to the outside. He's had a little bit of success up the middle, and there's a hole there. Ends up closing quickly, and boy, he got popped. Mm. Absolutely popped. Ball came flying out. To Jet Bush, one of more than a few players in there. You could see him in pain. Right up has that arm up. Man, that is mm. awful. That young man has been through the ringer. Two ACLs, now this injury, and he is in severe pain. Card will hand it off for Roshan Johnson through the car wash. Johnson stays oh up. My God. Oh no, he didn't! Touchdown! That is absolutely insane from Roshan Johnson. That is just individual effort. Absolute individual effort because Colorado was right where they needed to be. Right where they needed to be. And as we have seen with some of the Colorado plays, not finishing. They're there. They stopped it. That play is designed to go outside. They stopped it outside. All the help was in the inside. And he's just pinballing off peel the people. Nobody's wrapping up. Nobody's keeping their feet. He's keeping his legs moving. And he gets the payoff. How about the lineman staying engaged late in that play? And Texas has a double nickel at the Valero Alamo Bowl tonight. Tom Herman goes to the handshake class <laughs> on the sideline. Well done. Yeah, he figured it out after two as Collins goes walking Collins off. Collins going in. Tonight will be over. So here's, here's again the run. Again, you'll see Colorado played it. They played it pretty well. This play is coming this way, and Colorado does a nice job of stopping it going to the outside. And then there's help back in the middle hill there because they stopped it going that way. And the help is right there. And now there's one, there's two, three, four. What an effort. That was all individual effort on a play that should have been a two-yard loss. All right, so let's all hope together as as a group of people watching this game that the first half of that run is 2020 and the second half of the run is 2021 yeah how about it huh yeah wouldn't that be nice a lot of bouncing around and a nice, around. nice free run daylight i'll tell you the biggest thing i hope tonight is we've seen a few people go down with injury you know the biggest name being sam ellinger but more than a few people and just you got to hope they're all right kick goes into the end zone and why not? One return, oh, and wow, my goodness gracious, I, Texas, Texas, that's uh, Jaden Hollaby, the linebacker. That is, wow, I mean, they are playing to the horn now. You know, I talk about when Colorado wasn't tackling, wasn't moving their feet. This is called using your feet and running through a tackle. Wow. That is running through a tackle. <laughs> well done. I mean, look, for people who are looking for playing time next yeah. year. Hey, listen, these are guys that don't get a lot of time. We may have targeting here. Targeting, okay. And a crown of the helmet, possibly. I'm going to need you on this one, Bill. This certainly was not a defenseless player. No way it was a defensive player. So if, if I'm correct, Bill, you correct me if I'm wrong. If it's not a defensive player, then it's going to have to be helmet to helmet, right? Crown of, the, crown of the helmet contact, I believe, is what we're looking for. We will check in now with Bill Lamagne, our rules analyst. Bill, uh, what, are you, what are you seeing? When, sometimes that term helmet to helmet's misleading. 
It's got to be a crown of the helmet where yeah. he dips down. I, I, and Bill, I think in looking at it, I don't think he. I think he hit him with his shoulder. He I don't had think it he hit dip him down, head. but the helmet did not. Right, exactly. Hit. It did not. Hit. I don't think there's any way this is going to be targeting. His head he, did dip down, which he, you don't want. I understand that, but he definitely caught him with the shoulder. But did that crown of the helmet hit and cause the head to to turn and go down? To, to me, in, in the in the what I've seen, I think it was his shoulder. Because just so we're, everybody understands, the defenseless part of this is out, right? Yes, there's no defenseless, no defenseless player, player Has here. to be crown of the helmet. So now crown of the helmet. And he did drop his head, which is something you definitely want out of the game. That's the indicator, yes. dropping the head. But now I, they'll have to determine, right. with that drop of the head, did that crown of the helmet cause that hit to, for, for the runner to drop his head down? Yeah, I, I'm going to say I don't, I don't think so. I, I think he hit him with his shoulder. We'll continue to take looks at him. All right. Watch again. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. No target. First down. Good decision yeah. by replay. Yeah. You're absolutely right. The helmet went in front, and it was the shoulder that I mean, that, that is actually outside of his head being down, which is something we don't want. Everything else, you want that, that helmet in front. And hit with the shoulder. I mean, that was what you want to see, except exactly. for the head being down. And, and I, I'm glad you said that, because sometimes we talk about the letter of the law, and that's that's what we're all using. But it's also important what we're teaching players. Do you want them to do what they just did or not? And this run gets to the outside here, here, and not much. Here is the words I can use the most from youth football all the way up. And it's the simplest line in the world. See what you hit. Yep. See what you hit. All that young man does is lift his head a bit. If he's going in with eyes up and can see, and it's not the crown down, I mean, then you're talking about putting that on tape as a picture book tackle. But he dropped his head, and unfortunately, you know, that, that's the part you don't want. On second down, it's Lewis. And he climbs the pocket. Lewis. Gets hit again, and we check in with Chris Button. Yeah, Jared Broussard out of the injury tent and on the bench, still having some discomfort in his left shoulder. I did watch him do some push-ups. He is able to put some strength on it, but still dealing with some pain in the left shoulder. And, and, and Chris, I hope he stays right where he is. For a guy that two off-seasons has had to rehab it, a torn ACL on the same knee, you don't need any more of that. I mean, he does not need to step foot on this field again tonight. No, especially after as tough of a season as it's been just for everybody to stay on the field. And this being the climax of the season as Lewis gets popped. I mean, there are some big hits. Chris Ash told us, and I, I, I will say I was a little skeptical. He said, hey, Texas really wants to play in this game. There's been a lot of talk of whether or not Texas wants to play. And I, I'm a big Chris Ash Fan, but the way he said it, I had a little bit of a feel that maybe he was trying to convince his guys that they were ready to play. That is absolutely untrue. They were locked in, and he deserves a ton of credit. Absolutely does. And you have the young guy in a the play there, Keaton Crawford. That was, a, that was a corner blitz. We hadn't seen that one tonight. With, with six to go, essentially, they, they uncorked the corner blitz as Lewis goes scrambling, and this is out of bounds. Third down coming up. Hey, uh, New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some fun yeah, in college are. football, and maybe you will as a Notre Dame guy. We'll find out. Alabama's got a couple Heisman finalists that Notre Dame's going to have to deal with. Yep. Ian Book was talking the other day about the, the decision-making of when he should throw, when he should run against such an athletic defense. That could be really important in this game. Ian Book, when he's on throwing the ball, I mean, that's when they can be at their best. But when he can be most dangerous, he makes such great decisions on when to run, when to use his legs to make a big play. You see an incomplete pass. And a flag down. But I, I, I listen, it's all, a lot's going to have to go right for Notre Dame. Let, let's just be honest, yep. okay? I mean, the yep. way Alabama's playing, we just saw what Notre Dame uh, happened to them in the ACC championship game. They, they've got to be hitting on all cylinders. The run game, uh, Ian's got, Ian Book's got to be hitting the passing. The defense, which does have some good team speed, uh, has to has to play play extremely well in this game. Personal foul, block number 58 and 28. Penalties decline. The result of the play is fourth down. Listen, if 
it's going to be a good word. Notre Dame is going to have to be very fundamentally sound and hit some big plays, and then they're going to have to make some stops, or Alabama maybe make some mistakes here. I mean, Alabama is playing as the better team. I don't think there's a doubt about no. that, but Notre Dame certainly has talent. We have seen it uh, without question. They just have to put it's one of those games where they have to be the recipient of, of a mistake out there to try and capitalize and not be the team making the mistakes. I want to know what the play calling has got to look like defensively for Notre Dame because there are just so many weapons for Alabama. I mean, how do you pick your poison against that team? It's a, a, again, it's well, stopping this guy. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Listen, like you got and, this guy. And, and, and to me, he gets to me. He's the Heisman Trophy winner now. I, I get a little disgruntled at the award because it mostly goes to a quarterback. If it doesn't go to a quarterback, it has to go to somebody who has an otherworldly year. And that's what this guy has had. He is ridiculous. Then you got Najee Harris and obviously what Mac Jones is doing. To answer your question, Jason, you have to be fun, you have to be sound. You can't try and make somebody else's play, stay on your man or where you're supposed to be, and then fly to the ball. It sounds easy. There's no magic to it. You know, every offensive play is geared, if executed correctly, to score a touchdown. And every defensive play, if executed correctly, is geared to stop the team from, from making any yards or scoring a touchdown. So it's about execution. Players can be in the right place. Do they then make the play? Colorado here. They were in the right spot on that touchdown run we just saw. It was incredible. But then there was an individual effort by a player to beat that. Card sideline ball and this is batted away there is a flag down uh, last time a wide receiver won the Heisman was 1991 one of Colorado's best seasons in that uh, range as well Fence. five yard penalty from a previous spot still second down. But look, if the receiver has such a great year you got a quarterback well, throwing, throwing to him, to him right, which, right. which ends up being a problem for you the know, guy. And you you have start calling reverses right. to help him and, out. And you have Trevor Lawrence, who missed a couple of games. Does that get held against him? Kyle Trask has had a monster year. Uh, uh, do you think it should be held against him? For me, if, if you haven't played all the games, somebody out there has been great and played all the games. That's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I think that that even goes to overall as far as Though Ohio State kind of broke that mold this year with six, you know, being in the college class with, with six games. Uh, yeah, you know, seeing more, having more sample size and playing extremely well with more sample size should give you an edge, yes. Well, and nobody ever talks about what a receiver's record is as a starter. Though. No, they do That's not. The, they, you know, a quarterback no, gets that on their shoulder. They deserve some of the, the accolades for that. But I get it. There, there are so many talented players. When you confine it to quarterback, you do take away from the sparkle at some of the other skill positions. Completely agree. And I know there are awards out there for, for the other positions, but the Heisman is supposed to be for the best player. You know, and I, and I understand the quarterback touches the ball the most, and these, you know, look at these incredible. Look at the, the records of these quarterbacks. I mean, it is crazy. Three of them just had one loss. How about Ian, Ian Book's, like, Ian Book's that prize fighter. You're like, how do you lose four? Yeah. No prize fighter ever loses more than once. Man, well, but 30 and four is great. Oh, oh, it's fantastic. But look up against 34 and one, and then yeah. the other one's obviously less games. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence, I'll, I'll just say, is Trevor Lawrence on a different level. Boy. And Trevor Lawrence is, is easily the number one pick. It's not even a question uh, at all. He is, it really is, is impressive to watch. You know, I've really liked Zach Wilson this year for BYU as well. Well, Zach, is, Zach has moved up. Yep. It, according to Todd McShay, Zach has moved up uh, in the rankings a lot. What will be interesting to me, if Jacksonville has a number one pick, they're going to take Trevor Lawrence. If the Jets have the second pick, do they take a Justin Fields? Do they take a quarterback? As we get another quarterback coming out. That's number four for, for Texas. Texas. This, this is verging on an Alamo Bowl record as well. It's Ben Ballard in for Card. So we've had Ellinger, Thompson, Card, and Ballard. That, that's why they're letting Card throw the ball around because they say you only have X amount of time you're going to be in there before we're putting another quarterback yeah. in. Yeah, the sand has fallen through his hourglass today. And they will run it one more time. Texas with Watson, the tailback. But man, Casey Thompson, he didn't imagine he was going to have this kind of night. And you'll see the Capital One post game immediately following the game on the ESPN app. We'll talk more about this Texas team that has cobbled this thing together beautifully yeah, tonight. Yeah, things you didn't see coming. Yeah. Casey Thompson. 
8 of 10, 170 yards and four touchdowns. You didn't anybody, have that? Anybody pick that one? You didn't have that in the pool? If you did, congrats. You can come up here and take my gig. <laughs> wow. It's only a minute 53. They'd have to get here very quickly. They would. To, they to would. Let's just sample size. Run on the bank here. Yeah. 145 to go in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Colorado is going to have to wait another year to get their first bowl win in a while. And it's slide from Ballard. And the swell of the crowd was neat here in a season where we haven't had crowds very much. Yeah. To hear them root for a young man who doesn't get playing time and grow with that run and see Ellinger smiling. Oh, they left him short of the first oh. down. Ellinger's like, come on, give it to him. So that, Ellinger's saying, that's why I don't slide. Let him run a quarterback sneak now. <laughs> so obviously the biggest question coming out of this game is going to be Sam Ellinger. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, A, what's, what's the damage to the shoulder? And B, what does that do if he has already decided? Does it affect that decision at all? But the main thing is going to be what, what, what is, how bad is the shoulder? Yeah, and can he go through all of the, right. the showcases? If he, if he intends to go to the NFL, right. could he go through all the things that he needed to? Hey, Sports Center is coming up next. It's from Los Angeles. Stan and Neil have it for you. They'll show you how Notre Dame and Ohio State can pull off an upset. So you'll be watching. I'm I sure. certainly will you'll be. You'll get the whole schema there. Uh, best catches from all the playoff teams. And then Giannis and the Bucks looking for some vengeance against uh, Miami. And Chris Paul and Zion Williamson. Sports Center next right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Uh -oh. The Gatorade is coming. The Gatorade bath is coming. Watch it. Here it comes. The hunt is on for the head coach. The sneaking of bowl season. I was it's great fun. fearful that the coach gets hit with the bucket. Oh, he's unaware this time. Yeah. The head coach him. unaware in his natural habitat, waiting for the bucket to arrive. Aggressively, he's still coaching. You know what's bad is when it happens and the coach isn't happy about it. Let's see. Tom coach. Herman. Here coach. we go. Oh, yes. Oh, they got him really good. He had no idea. Well done. Texas wins 55-23 in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Boy, what an effort from a team. People said, are they going to really want to be here? Are they going to want to play? Oh, yeah. Congratulations to effort by everybody out there. Colorado will see what they can come back with next year after a, a short but, but impressive regular season. And if this, in fact, is the end for Sam Ellinger, a tip of the cap to a guy who had one hell of a career at Texas. An outstanding young man. It's yep. him and Colt McCoy for all the records right. at Texas. For Chris Button, for Bill Lamagne, for Mike Golick Sr., I'm Jason Benetti. Our entire crew, we say farewell from San Antonio. Sports Center is next, and tune into the ESPN app for the Capital One postgame, which will include the trophy 